Back to pass. Looking way downfield, looking for Hazelhurst. He's open, and it is caught oh, a touchdown. Oh. And the ball's been taken away by North Quincy. Going down the field is number 28, John Cahill, and he is going to score. Hello everyone, welcome to Veterans Memorial Stadium for the 2006 edition of the Thanksgiving Day Football Rivalry between the North Quincy Red Raiders and the Quincy Presidents. My name is Jonathan Clary. I'm being joined by Jim Timmons. And Jim, uh, it's always a fantastic game here between when these two teams meet. Oh, you're right, John. Today's a special day, too. It's the... Uh it's a typical Thanksgiving Day football game because it's raining out here, <laughs> but atypically the field looks great. We've got the new field turf down. Uh, we're watching the players warm up. Great footwork. The field's holding up super. And if you've been watching our uh, replays during the week, you saw all the muddy uniforms. None of that today. All the moms will be able to see their sons looking great out there. And uh, it's going to make a big impact on today's game in terms of the, the quality of play, uh, the boys, you know, don't have to worry as much about the injury factor, and uh, so it should be interesting. Yeah, it certainly will. Real quick, we're going to do a little pregame show. Uh, we'll start off with the North Quincy Red Raiders, Jim. They come in with a record of 1-9 and nine overall, 1-7 in the Atlanta Coast League, 1-2 uh, and two at home, so they did get their one win against here, against Nosset here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. Uh, Jim, they've lost 7 in a row against the Quincy Presidents, 11 of the last 12, uh, so they're certainly looking to come in today with to get a big victory, and uh, Coach Jim Connors hoping for that. Yeah, you're right. Uh, this is Jim Connor's first game, uh, Bob Noble's seventh. Uh, Bob has run the slate thus far, and uh, got a little problem with equipment here, but uh, Bob continues undefeated. Uh, Jim Connor is unbeaten and untied, uh, but reading uh, the uh, interviews this week and talking to him, we know that he's taken a real careful approach to the game. He appreciates the nature of the rivalry, and um, he's got the boys ready to play. So should be really interesting out there, John. Right. And one thing about the records, you throw them away in this game. Yeah, you, you certainly know. do. Well, you mentioned about an interview uh, with Coach Connor. Uh, Matt McLaughlin, our sideline reporter, uh, had a chance to go down and interview Coach Connor yesterday at Kavanaugh Field before the uh, Red Raiders' final practice. So let's take a look at that interview right now. We're here with North Quincy head coach Jim Connor. Jim, your first year into this rivalry, what have you seen so far, and what are you looking forward to? Uh, well, this has been, uh, you know, this is going into this, I've seen the uh, the tradition, and I think it's uh, definitely a healthy rivalry that we have. And uh, and and looking at Quincy, and I think both teams are going to be prepared going into the game, and, uh, and I can guarantee it's going to be a game, a good game right into the, the fourth quarter. Certainly, as we always know, the Thanksgiving Day game and the tradition, always great games. Now, coming in and looking at Quincy, what does North need to do to stop them to pull out a win here on Thanksgiving? Well, I think the, uh, I mean, the team that's going to win this game is the team that's going to play sound football, and the team that's going to tackle on defense, it's going to uh, not turn the ball over on offense, and, uh, and just uh, execute to perfection. I don't think it's going to be anything fancy by either side. I don't think it's going to take trickery. It's just going to be sound football is, going to, is the team that's going to win. Now, coming into this game, what kind of message are you giving to your kids? Let them know the, uh, the importance of this game, as I'm sure they know, but how do you calm them down and let them know that it is just a game and, you know, you know make plays, make the, make the assignments, and how do you, you know, keep their minds just, just the game set? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously the kids definitely know the importance of the game, and the struggle that I have is definitely trying to keep them grounded um, with this because they definitely feel that they are uh, more than just a high school football player, which is what they are. Um, so the tough thing is, and I just keep preaching it day in and day out, that uh, you know we just got to do our thing and just you know more focus on the football game and and this all this thing you know, the stadium and the new new field and the crowd it's all going to be wonderful but uh, the most important thing is getting the win and just stay focused on that and if you catch one of your teammates looking up at the fans and everything just you know ground them in until the end of the quarter end of the fourth quarter and then uh, and then after that well then we could start looking at how great that that win was for us sounds good Jim best luck to you tomorrow morning at Thanksgiving. Thank you very much. Well, welcome back. And, uh, Jim, you know, Coach Connor is certainly enthusiastic and excited about his first game here on Thanksgiving Day. Yeah, you're right. He's a Pennsylvania guy. Um, he played uh, college football here in Boston at Boston College. And one of the other things about him is he's in the high school, which is great. Both head coaches are history teachers at their respective high schools. So uh, Coach Connor knows about the rivalry. He's been around the boys at practice, as he said, and with them in the hall. So um, he's got the mindset set for today's game, John. Yes, yeah, certainly. On the other side, Coach Bob Noble, he's a veteran at this now, Jimmy. He said this is his seventh year as the head coach of the Quincy Presidents on Thanksgiving Day. And uh, the Presidents, they have a great record right now, 
11 of 12 victories in the past 12 years. Uh, certainly could be the favorite here today just with a veteran experience. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I guess the, from the coaching perspective, they have a veteran experience. Um, I think the teams on the field are going to be evenly matched. Um, Coach Noble brings a little pressure with that record, though. It's always <laughs> tough when you're undefeated. You look at the uh, way they talk about the Colts and the pressure there. Um, winning is nice, but it brings with it certain pressures that I know Quincy feels this year. And uh, as we said earlier, you throw the records out. So their um, record, which has been disappointing, I'm sure, um, is out the door today. And now Coach uh, Noble's trying to protect that 7-0 and record. Yes, yeah, certainly. Again, Matt McLaughlin had a chance to talk to uh, Coach Bob Noble yesterday at Faxon Field after the Quincy High practice. So let's take a look at that. Here with head coach of the Quincy Presidents, Bob Noble. Bob, what does this team need to do to be successful and pull a win off Thanksgiving? Well, I think we just have to uh, execute what we've, we've put in over the last week and a half, and I think, you know, things will, will go just well, you know, go, go fine. I'm not, uh, you know, we've, we have a history of doing pretty good here, so in this particular game, so, you know, I don't see that changing. Now, as you mentioned, the history that you guys have in this Thanksgiving game and the winning streak that's going to hopefully continue for Quincy if you're rooting for the Quincy Presidents. What have you guys been scouting for North Quincy High School? What have you been looking at? Well, as with most teams, you know, first and foremost, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're referring to what, what do we have to do to stop them, yeah, we have to stop their run game. And in particular, we have to stop uh, the Shipley uh, you know, kid. And, and if we do that, I think that, you know, just like any other team, you stop their run game. It forces them to do things that they generally don't like doing. So, I mean, uh, we're just throwing the football. And, uh, you know, we, so you stop the run, you, it takes away a lot of what they like to do. So, you know, that's our you know, primary focus and you know, go from there. Now, knowing the importance of this game, what, what message do you stress to the uh, to your players, trying to keep them calm going into such a big game, so hyped up in the city? What do you do to keep them level? That's a good question. I don't know if I can, uh, I don't know if I do keep them level. So, I mean, I, you know, to be honest with you, I, and I don't know if I want to keep them level. I mean, this is a highly emotional situation, uh, you know, for both teams. And, yeah, I, you want them to be excited about playing. But at the same time, you know, when you're, particularly when you're talking to your seniors, you want them to, um, enjoy uh, this. This, this. This is a u unique experience, and you, we want them to go out and have a good time at it, and uh, and remember everything that they're uh, you know they're going to go through or have gone through, over, particularly over the last you know two or three days, and you know with the you know the Hall of Fame dinner last night, and then followed you know by the the rally today, and then you know we have somewhat of a ceremonial thing we do here at our last practice, and, and you know and, and and the game and everything tomorrow. We have a you know we as as does North Quincy, we have a little thing get together tonight. So all of that we want them to absorb and, and, and to remember and, and to enjoy because uh, yeah this, these are you know times that you know you should look back on with a, you know as you can notice around us a lot of our former players have come down. Uh, to uh, support our kids uh, in their last practice, and they will again tonight, because you know this game and, and playing for us, you know, meant a great deal to them. So it, you know, yeah, we enjoy it and, re and remember it. And, you know, as with a lot of kids, they don't necessarily comprehend that now, but in a very short period of time, they will. And, and that's what I keep reminding them: enjoy this. This is, it doesn't get any better than this. Well, coach, we thank you for your time. We wish you the best of luck tomorrow afternoon at Veterans Memorial Stadium. Thank you. Thanks, thank coach. You, John, interesting contrast and approaches there. Uh, Coach Connor talked about how he's working hard to keep the boys level. Coach Noble saying he kind of celebrates and welcomes the enthusiasm. So mm -hmm. we'll see how that plays out on the field. They both did talk about the importance of playing sound, fundamental football. So we're going to watch for turnovers as you do in any football game. Yes, yeah, certainly. Turnovers are always the key, as you mentioned, Jim. In uh, the past few years on this Thanksgiving Day football game, uh, whoever's won the turnover battle has won the game. Uh, it's been true also for the rest of the se uh, regular season for both of these teams. Uh, both teams have found themselves in turnover trouble and uh, against some of the good teams in this league, Jim, the Atlanta Coast League, uh, the Plymouth Norths, the Marshfields. Uh, turnovers certainly hurt these teams when they play them this year. Yeah, the Atlantic Coast League was uh, really solid football. There are some excellent programs you mentioned a couple at the top, um, Whitman Hanson. They play good, sound football and have for a long time now. They're well coached. So it's not as if uh, the records reflect poor football teams. They're in a very competitive league. Um, we saw North Quincy uh, develop a bit over the course of the year. What we saw with Quincy was the injury bug. Um, yep. They never really had everybody together. Uh, they probably would have won their last game if Tom Hazelhurst were with them. Uh, they they played great the whole game there without him, and he's a key cog in the team out there in the field today. So 
should be a should be a good one, Sean. Yeah, certainly. One of the things Coach Noble mentioned yesterday, uh, he said this is the first time they've been 100% healthy the entire season. As mentioned, Tom Hazelhurst is going to be back on the field after a two-game injury. Also, Jim Akins is finally healthy. Uh, he's been battling some injuries back and forth the entire season. So two key factors for this uh, president squad are going to be back on the field. Another injury we should look at, Terrence Sibley, uh, he's had an ankle sprain kind of periodically throughout the year, Jim. Uh, so hopefully he can come back and have a strong game here tonight. Yeah, I think the running game is going to uh, determine the outcome here. Bob Noble moved Hazelhurst into the uh, tailback position, kind of changed the complexion of the Quincy offense with tremendous success. Um, although the rain is a bit of a factor here, it's not too heavy yet. Maybe a little later in the game, but there's definitely a swirling wind. The wind's coming out of the southeast, and um, the field is kind of open on that side, so it's getting a healthy dose of uh, breeze. So. That's going to kind of neutralize both quarterbacks. So it's, we're going to have to watch the running game, line play and running game today. It'll be interesting, John. Certainly. Early determinants. Yes, certainly, Jim. Well, we're just underway here at Veterans Memorial Stadium for the 74th annual Thanksgiving Day football game between the Quincy Presidents and the North Quincy Red Raiders. Uh, the fight songs have been played. The national anthem has been played. And we're getting ready to have the teams come out to the field. So we're going to go down to the field here and have the teams come out. And I think Quincy High is coming out right now. All right, Jim, so the presidents come out onto the field. And yeah, it's one of the most exciting times uh, of the year for these guys coming onto the field, Thanksgiving Day football game, especially for the seniors, uh, their last game. And for a lot of these kids, it's the last football game, organized football game they'll play in their career. Yeah, Coach Noble mentioned that fact, that uh, this is the last time for several of the kids that they'll put on the uh, shoulder pads and helmet. But... Um, the conditions today are going to make it an enjoyable one. This field has really held up well uh, since they installed it. It's done everything they advertise. So it's going to be very interesting to see how the two teams uh, use this positive field surface. Neither one is really noted for uh, quick, fast, skill-type players. It's going to be a grind-it-down type ball game. Uh, here come the Red Raiders, John, out onto the field, led by their quarterback and uh, their all-round senior go-to guy Dave Guerriero uh, Sean McBride Dave Guerriero leading them out so here come the Red Raiders but uh, anyway the field is going to be a positive here it's going to give the teams a chance to do their thing out there John yes certainly Jim uh, so this is the 74th edition of the Thanksgiving Day football game between these two teams. As we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, uh, Quincy comes in, Jim, with a seven-game winning streak, and North Quincy, excuse me, an 11 out of 12. So North Quincy is looking to get on the board here. Uh, it's been a while since their last victory, so they certainly want to get out. All right, coming on to the field now are the captains for the coin toss for the Quincy Presidents. Uh, we have number 10, Jim Akins, number 17, uh, Tom Hazelhurst, number 18, Matt Boyle, number 20, Charles McGee, and number 33, Camilo Arandondo. For nice North Quincy, oh, we're going to get onto the field you. real quick for the nice to coin toss. Guys, introduce yourselves, please. Okay, guys, congratulations on being the captains of your team. We're going to have a great game today, right? Great game today. Okay, Quincy are the visiting team, Mr. Boyle. That's a tail, that's a head. Call it in the air, please. Heads, he calls, and it is a head. Receives it. You want the ball. Which ball do you want to defend? Put your backs that way, North Quincy. Quincy up here. Quincy has won the toss, elected to receive. Shake hands, guys. Let's have a great ball game now. Let's have a great game. Keep up the good work now. All right, real quick, the captains for North Quincy. Number 7, Sean McBrien. Number 37, Dave Guerriero. Number 42, Terrence Sibley. Number 56, John Benoit. Excuse me, Benoit. Uh, Quincy called heads, and it was heads of Jim, so they won the toss, and they're going to receive. They want the ball right away and try to put it right away to this North Quincy squad. Yeah, it's generally the case that a team that gets out on top is uh, able to hold on in this game, in this tradition. Uh, last year it was 0-0 uh, zero, zero at the half, and then Quincy came out in the second half and did their thing early. So uh, Quincy looking to get the ball. As we mentioned, the real positives for Quincy uh, their skill positions, um, we've talked a lot when we've covered them about uh, their quarterback, who's probably one of the best in the region, Matt Boyle. 
Hazelhurst, one of the most talented athletes around, he's now in the tailback spot. So we're going to look for those two guys to be trying to make something happen here early on, John. I think if Coach Noble's thinking about the passing game at all, he's going to have to uh, go to it early as the weather's starting to intensify here. Yes, yeah, certainly. The weather reports have been uh, varying throughout the day, Jim. Uh, when uh, we first got here at the stadium, uh, it was around uh, 6.30, and it was a beautiful day out. It was cool, but it was nice out. The sun was breaking through here and there. Uh, and then uh, as we're speaking right now, the rain's coming down a little bit hotter and a little bit more harsh. Uh, so hopefully the rain will be able to hold out a little here uh, so as we get underway here for the 74th Annual Thanksgiving Day Football Game. Yeah, unless you think otherwise, our in your intrepid broadcasters here are... Uh, I'm um, able to take in the full flavor of the conditions. Um, <laughs> we're in an open booth here, being rained upon, so um, we're going to get a little bit of a feel for it. The temperature isn't that bad. I really think the only major, or the only big factor, will be the wind. It's a little swirling, and as we said, it's coming right across the field. As you look at the field, it's coming from the Quincy side across to the north. The wind that is so going to be interesting. Dave Guerrero's got his men set up. And here's the opening kick of the 2006 Thanksgiving game. Camilo Arandano's going to take it, and he's going to take a knee, actually, Jim, at the 35-yard line. That decision by Arandando. He uh, picked up the ball, stumbled just a little with the ball, and decided to take a knee because North Quincy was right upon him. Yeah, not a bad decision. Uh, Coach Connor, a little conservative. He's He wants to avoid mistakes early on, so it was a little squib kick. Get the coverage boys down there and just avoid a big return to start out. Nice decision. You can see what Coach Connor's doing here, John. He wants to play a, a safe, conservative brand of football. See if his boys can win it on the field by making plays and not let mistakes determine the outcome. All right, number 18, Matt Boyle comes out for the Quincy Presidents. He has two receivers to the left. In motion goes Arandando. And he's going to hand off to Hazelhurst. Hazelhurst gets up to the 40-yard line and make it to the 42. Nice run on first down for Tom Hazelhurst and the Quincy Presidents. Yeah, nice start by Hazelhurst. Picked up about six. And on the tackle, number 16, Alex Tregellis. And uh, I missed the other guy. There was a linebacker in there as well. Um, we'll do our best to get all the boys' names out there today because... As, uh, as we said, we have a clear view of all numbers today, John. No excuses for us. <laughs> Second down and three now for the Presidents. Ball at the 42-yard line on the Quincy side of the field. Quincy def defending the north end zone. North Quincy defending the south end zone. Iron down to motion again. They're going to hand it off to Hazelhurst once again. He's going to fight his way up to the 45-yard line and leans up to the 46. Nice second effort, got him right to the first down marker. Uh, one little thing, we'll, we're going to watch a replay on this and uh, just watch the second effort by Hazelhurst as he goes over the right side. One little factor we'll have to look at, John, is Tom Hazelhurst missed a couple of games due to injury, and um, he's coming out today all fired up. Now, they go to him a lot early on. We'll just have to see how his conditioning is and whether a... Uh, a fatigue factor becomes part of this uh, uh, game here for Hazelhurst. He goes both ways. He's all fired up here, and that adrenaline rush can carry you for a while. But after that, his conditioning may become a factor. We'll watch for that. First down and 10 now for the Presidents. Ball spot at the 46-yard line. I'm going to give it to Hazelhurst again. He's going to fight his way across the 50-yard line, Jim. Nice job by T uh, Tom Hazelhurst. Get across the 50-yard line to the North Quincy, 48. Yeah, again, he's being tackled by the secondary. Um, you don't want to see that early on in a game, that uh, your secondary is making all the tackles. Great job by the Quincy offensive line of opening things up for Hazelhurst. So that's his third run. He's picked up about 17 yards. He's picking them up at six yards a clip, roughly. It's going to bring up a second and four, John. As you said, second and four, 8.50 left to go in the first quarter here. Matt Boyle brings his team to the line. Two receivers to the right. Hazelhurst in the backfield. Anthony Gilbody goes in motion, and it's going to pitch to Hazelhurst to the left. Nice block out in front of Hazelhurst. He has the first down and more, and he's going to get up to the 38-yard line for Quincy High School. Geez, I'll tell you, John, that was more than an ice block. Anthony Gilbody 
absolutely laid out the defensive end. Watch this replay and watch the red shirt go up in the air. That's what frees this run. See that block by Gilbody? Hazelhurst had nothing but green space in front of him. Gets driven out of bounds at the 40. Super block by Gilbody. Uh, Hazelhurst keeps up the, the steam train here. He's just mowing down the field. He's picked up 27 yards now on four carries. Ball at the 30, excuse me, at the 39-yard line. Gilbody in motion again. It's going to be trapping now to Aaron Donna. He switches up a little, and he's going to be close to the first down, Jim. He's going to get to the 30-yard line. Yeah, really nice call there by Coach Noble. I thought we'd see a little more of this early on, traps and counters type thing. Coaches want to take advantage of the excitement and the aggressiveness of the teams. Well, they pulled the, the, the trigger there, uh, North focused on Hazelhurst. Nice little counter. And Arredondo, as you said, picked up eight, John. Great run. Actually, they're giving him nine. It's about second and one from the 30. Quincy with a great opening drive. 7.30 left to go in the first quarter. Still scoreless in the 74th edition of this Thanksgiving football game. And it looks like we're going to have our first penalty of the day, Jim. Yeah, there was definitely movement on both sides. We'll see who went first. Lionsman coming in to confer. We'll send it down to the field for the call. We have a dead ball foul. Legal procedure on the offense. Still second down. So legal procedure called on the Quincy President's cell. Send them back five yards to the 35-yard line, bringing up a second down and six. All right, second and six. First mistake there. Quincy just mowing down the field. Uh, they were at the line, ready to go. Now there's a little break in momentum. They go from second and one to second and six. Changes the play calling. Let's see if the Red Raiders can't take advantage and come up with a stop here. Three C is in the right now. Aaron Donda goes in motion. Fake the handoff. Boyle back to pass. Looking downfield. And he's going to keep it himself, Jim. He's going to run up down to the 30. And fights his way down to the 25-yard line. Matt Boyle put his shoulder down and picked up the first down. Yeah, great run by Boyle. Very gutsy effort by him. We know he's capable of that. If you uh, watch the replay here, you're going to see Dave Thompson commit for the stop. And Dennis Martin really lay a hit on Boyle. Here you see uh, Thompson, number 24, come up, make the hit. And then Martin puts another stick on him. Boyle did a good job of keeping his hands on the ball. Quincy moving the chains here, first and 10 from just outside the 25-yard line. Aaron Down is going to go now to wide left of Matt Boyle. Tucker and Akins are to the right of Boyle. And up to Hazelhurst. Right up the middle, and he's going to get one or two yards in that play, Jim. Get up to about the 28-yard line. Excuse me, to the 23-yard line. Yeah, that's uh, fairly routine stuff there. That's what you normally see, about a nice four-yard gain you'd be happy with. we got about six minutes left here, John. Quincy's come out. They've just moved the ball. Nice five-minute drive here. They're, uh, they've kept it on the ground, banged away steadily at the North Quincy defense. They have the, the Red Raiders back on their heels a bit. Someone needs to come up and make a play in a red jersey here. And on the other side of the ball, Quincy wants to just keep doing what they're doing. They're very methodical here in their first drive. Pitch now to Camilla Arandondo to the left side. He crosses the 20-yard line, and he'll be close to a first down. Looks like he's going to be a yard short. He's going to be up to the 18-yard line, and they'll bring up a third down and two. Yeah, that time a nice job by the defensive end for the Red Raiders, John Cahill, number 28. He had the outside contain. Hazelhurst came out to get him, and he was able to fight the block off and turn Arredondo up inside where the Red Raiders made the tackle. So third down and two, as you said, we're coming up on five minutes here. This is the first big play of the game, John. Yeah, certainly third downs are going to be key in this game, Jim. And we've seen throughout the season uh, on very few occasions uh, these teams have been able to convert. However, when they have, they've been very successful, and they've usually come up with a win for the game. Third down and two. Hand off to Hazelhurst, and he's going to be right at the first down mark. We'll see what kind of spot he gets. Yeah, Guerriero, nice penetration. Dave Guerriero focusing on Hazelhurst, came right up through the line, made the stop. When you watch the replay, you're going to see this. 
Dave Guerriero with nice penetration, and he gets in there. He was focused on Hazelhurst, made the hit, held on, and they're going to bring out the change for the measurement. One thing we should talk about a bit, John, is that uh, both teams have kickers, and uh, kicking could be a factor today. Um, I don't know if Quincy would try a field goal from this point. It's certainly within the range of Mr. Arredondo. Uh, Quincy is just short, John. Just short there, so the big decision for Coach Noble. He's just outside the 15, fourth and less than a foot, I would say, and it looks like they're going to go for it. Jim, we know uh, Queen's presence, Diego Arandondo, their kicker, uh, he certainly has a distance for a field goal. In the very first game of the year, uh, Quincy against Falmouth, uh, that was at Weymouth High School, Diego Arandondo uh, kicked a field goal from 34 yards. It was ruled no good, but certainly had plenty of distance on it. So Arandondo does have the leg for a field goal. Yeah, Dave Guerriero in the, uh, for the North Quincy Red Raiders, he's a kicker too. So be interesting to see if the toes are a factor in today's game. Here it is, big fourth down play. Boyle on the center. And he's going to keep it himself, and he might be stood up at the line there, Jim. It's going to be very close to see what happens. There was a little penetration initially. He did not need much. It's all going to depend on the spot. North yeah. did a nice job, but I think they're overly optimistic. I, it looks like, yep, they're moving the chains. Yeah, if you watch this, all he really needed was about a half a foot, and he got that sort of penetration. You see Hazelhurst helping him as well. It was that first penetration. The North kids definitely stood them up and moved them back, but that first penetration got them to the 15. That moves the chains, and it's first and 10 from the 15, John. So a big first down for the presence and a big fourth down conversion. And a timeout on the field real quick. Yeah, the linesman is telling the Red Raiders they have to stay inside their box. They're moving down the field with the ball to watch, but the field is marked at the 25, and all the players are supposed to be uh, within the 25-yard line markers. First down and 10 for the presence. Ball at the 15-yard line of North Quincy High School. Arandondo in motion. They give it to Hazelhurst over the right side. He leaps over Arandondo, and he's going to get up to see the 12-yard line. Driven, uh, driven down there by number 11 for North Quincy, Dennis Martin. Also over there for the Red Raiders, Dave Guerriero. Yeah, and Ephraim Melendez, number 26, a name we haven't talked about before, but he had him wrapped up as well. So nice job of gang tackling. Red Raiders keying a little more on 1-7 there. Might be time for Quincy to look at another one of those counters. Um, Arredondo has been running well all year for the uh, presidents. This is Camillo Arredondo, one of the captains, number 33. Uh, he's run very well for the presidents all year. He's a great option for them. But they send him out to the slot position, the flanker position. Actually, it's going to be an empty backfield. He's got two flankers here. Three minutes left to go in the first quarter. Arn down and now comes behind Boyle, and it's going to be handoff now to Tucker. And he'll be going up to about the 11-yard line. And it'll bring up a third down and a long five to go. Yeah, Quincy's last game here at the stadium. I don't know if you recall it, John. I certainly do because I talked about it a bit. Jared Tucker took a ferocious hit during the game. Uh, he hopped right up. He finished the game while it turned out. He spent some time in the hospital that week. He really got injured, uh, but you would not have known it on the field that night. Uh, Jared, a tough young man who really stood up for the team there that last game. I remember that hit well. Uh, he ended up hospitalized, but he's back out here today for this big game. Third down to five. Tucker goes in motion. Boyle back to pass. Looking for Tucker, and actually he's going to come across the middle, and it is incomplete. Pass was intended for Camilla Arandondo. He was in the end zone, but it falls incomplete. Fourth down and five now. Excuse me, fourth down and six for the Presidents. Yeah, Dave Thompson, number 24, out there on the coverage. He's banging the turf because he thought he had a shot at an interception. But uh, North Quincy had that play well covered. Uh, they broke it up. And are we bringing a uh, field goal unit out? Yep, it looks like... We're going to see Mr. Arredondo, uh, Mr. Arredondo out there. This is the other Arredondo, Diego. He's the kicker, and he's going to be setting up from the 10. It's going to be about a 28-yarder. Quincy's had a long drive here, Jim. We're now at 2:12 left to go in the first quarter. North Quincy has yet to get the ball. 
Good snap, good hold. Kick is up, and it is good. Great kick by Diego Arredondo. That was super, and as we said, kicking could be a factor today. Both teams capable of doing that. A 28-yard field goal by Diego Arredondo puts the precedence on the board. If you watch this replay, he struck that ball beautifully. There was no question on that field goal. That looked like he had about 10 or 15 more yards in it as well. He could hit a 35-yarder if called upon today. So, so as said, a 28-yard field goal, Jim, excuse me, and the presence on the board, 3 nothing with 2.06 left to go in the first quarter. Yeah, a nine-minute drive. Coach Noble's got to be delighted with that. I'm sure he wanted to put six on the board. They did put points on the board. But more importantly, some of these Red Raiders who go both ways, like I'm looking down at the sideline at Dave Guerriero. He's down there with his helmet off, really sucking wind. Um, he was out there working hard for nine minutes defensively. Now he's going to put the helmet back on offensively, and that's going to be tough for them to do. So great drive by the Presidents. They ground down the Red Raiders a bit and got on the board early for this 3 nothing lead. We'll see how the Red Raiders respond, John. It's a short kick going to be taken by one of the... Nope, not taken by an up back. And it is fielded at the 21-yard line by number 12, Mike Jay. And he goes up, still on his feet, and he is brought down there. A great tackle by Tom Hazelhurst was on the, his back yeah. and brought down Mike Jay. Yeah, watch this replay. Mike Jay, all excited when he sees all this green space. Once he picks the ball up, and uh, little did he know that an arm would come up from the field and pull him down. Watch this tackle by Hazelhurst. Jay gets cut, recovers his balance, but then gets hauled down. So nice run back by Mike Jay. Puts a little air back in the sails of the Red Raiders as they're going to start first and ten on the 40. Sean McBride leads his team out. Gary O goes in motion, and they're going to hand it to Terrence Sibley. And a nice run on first down up to the 45-yard line for Terrence Sibley and the North Quincy Red Raiders. Yeah, nice blocking by that Red Raider line. We're going to talk about both lines today. I'll just quickly go over the Red Raiders. Left tackle, Nick Gizzarelli. Left guard, John Benoit. Under center, Roger Kifode. The right tackle, Ben Johnson-Tate. And out, uh, right guard, rather, and out at the right tackle spot, Phil Kelly. Those are the guys who are going to be opening the holes for Mr. Sibley today. Hand off now to Adam, Tre Adam Tregellis, and it's going to be no gain there. Maybe gain of one on the play. Brought down there by number 33, Camilla Arandondo. Yeah, he was in a wingback spot there. He's a senior, brother of Alex, and uh, nothing really there on that play. Third and four for the Red Raiders. They're at the 46. One minute now left to go, Jim, in the first quarter. Quincy on top by a score of 3 nothing. Yeah, with the ball on the ground like this, a fast-moving first quarter. We've played, uh, I think, 11 straight minutes of football. There was one penalty that stopped the clock. Other than that, it's been running, John. President Show Blitz, and we're going to have a flag here. And Camilo Arandondo jumped off sides. He was trying to stay on, but he was leaning over the uh, line of scrimmage. Yeah, good job by McBride. One of the things you do when you see the defensive lineman jumping like that is you, you uh, hurry your snap count. McBride did that before Arandondo could jump back. And we now they've got ball the ball. Foul. Encroachment on the defense. First down. Well, they gave him the first down. We went... Uh, we went the five yards, and the ball ends up uh, past the stick. So the Red Raiders have a first down at midfield, John, with the clock running down to the end of the quarter. This could be the final play of the quarter. Brian comes out two men in the offset backfield. And it's a give to Sibley over to the right side. Terrence Sibley picks up the first down and more, Jim. Crosses the 35 to the 30, now to the 25 where he's brought down. And they're going to say he goes all the way down to the 22-yard line. Terrence Sibley, a big run. Oh, great individual effort. And watch on the replay here. Watch this hole open up out on the right side. You see big number 73 getting outside there to lead block. That's Ben Johnson Tate. Made a nice block, nice pulling block, and uh, down the sideline rumbled number 42, Terrence Sibley. He's only a junior, John, one of the captains, and a guy they really rely on. Big run for the Red Raiders. First and 10 from the 22, 
They are going to let the clock run out, John. So we're going to go to the end of the first quarter. And a nice first quarter it was. The president's got the ball. March right down the field. A real well run, well executed nine minute drive. Now the Red Raiders get the ball and they're off on a drive of their own after an exciting kick return by Mike J. The Red Raiders have marched down to the President 20. 40 yard drive so far. And um, we'll see what they can do, John, as we switch ends of the field. 3 nothing is our score at the end of the first quarter of play. We want to remind all of our viewers, if you're interested when this game will be replayed on Quincy Access Television, log on to QA TV's website, www.qatv.org, and you can click on the sports page for all the replay information for this weekend. Also, we want to remind all of our viewers, if you can't get out to the Christmas parade that's going to be this Sunday, watch it live on Quincy Access Television beginning at 12.30 p.m. So again, qatv.org for all your program schedule information. John, i got to give uh, the kids credit um, down on the field. Both cheerleading squads are here in full. We've got school bands here. Um, everyone has turned out, notwithstanding the tough weather conditions. I don't think we have the type of alumni turnout you might have seen otherwise. But uh, the kids are definitely here, and they're working hard. First down in uh, 10, Jim. And they're going to hand it off to, looks like, to Tregellis. And he'll get up to the 18-yard line. And she has number 36. Yep, that's Tregellis. Yeah, Adam Tregellis. We've got Adam and Alex, the Tregellis boys. Uh, we were admonished by their dad after the first game <laughs> when we, uh, due to a roster error, we didn't mention their names enough. So Tregellis, Tregellis, Tregellis there. That was number 36, the senior. Uh, they mix it up a little bit. Don't want to run Sibley into the ground in this uh, first half, John. He's the lone back again with Adam Tregellis as the wing back. Second down and seven now from the 19-yard line. And they give it to Sibley, and he is brought down immediately there by Quincy High School, number 50, Matt Orio. Yeah, a great penetration by Orio. He fought off the blocks, and uh, Matt got in there to make a stop on Sibley to bring up a big third down for the Red Raiders. This is going to be a third and seven from uh, just inside the 20. I don't know. The wind is uh, swirling here, John. It was favoring the Red Raiders. It was blowing southerly when we started the quarter. But looking at the flag now, it's now blowing a bit um, bit northerly here. It's, well, it's swirling again. I don't know. It's Dave kind of going a little bit everywhere. Yeah. I don't know if Dave could kick one from here. We'll see. Third down and seven. McBride back to pass. And it is complete. Actually, let's see if they call it complete. Pass was intended for number 12, Mike J, and he got hit there by Hazelhurst, and it goes incomplete. That was just a tremendous football play right there. Mike J with a gutsy effort. Watch the replay here. He does a little turn in, a little post pat, and he gets his arms up. He makes the effort, but he gets absolutely pasted there. That was a tremendous hit. Actually, Hazelhurst was in the vicinity, but it was Charles McGee. One of my favorite guys on this Quincy President squad, Charles can lay people out. We have seen him hit people this year, and it was his hit that broke up that play there. So fourth down, Red Raiders are going to go for it, John. Fourth and seven at the 19. Pass looking in the end zone, and it is intercepted by the Presidents. Coming up there with a big play. Let's see, it's number 19 for the Presidents. And unfortunately, we don't have his name on our roster, but he comes up with a big interception for Quincy High School, and they'll take over on the 20. Yeah, if you watch the replay, it looks like there was a little miscommunication. McBride's thrown to a spot, and Dave Thompson was um, much further out toward the sideline. Uh, David was running along the sideline route. He never turned it up and in, and McBride was throwing it at the rear pylon. So um, that was a a case of execution. Coach Connor said our boys need to execute on that particular play. A little miscommunication. Not a big deal. The ball was on the 20. If the play didn't work out, um, you know, the ball would have been set there and that's where it is after the interception. So it's one of those situations where it's a turnover without any impact at all. Just a play that did not work. And here comes Mr. Boyle. Presidents take over with 9.22 left to go in the first half. And it's a throw over to Arundando. 
And see, he's going to get up to close to the 25-yard line. They'll spot it at the 26. So a nice gain there by Camilo Arandondo on first down for the Presidents. John, we're being joined in the booth by Mayor Phelan and his sons. What I might do is turn my mic over to him. You can say hello, Mayor. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, Jim. How's everybody doing today? Excellent, Mr. Mayor. How are you doing? Good. Good start to the game, huh? Yeah, it's great been a nothing. great game so far. Um, always a big fan out here on Thanksgiving football, aren't you, Mr. Mayor? I, well, I'm up here now because it's pouring <laughs> out. I figured I'd get a little dry. But I wanted to wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Well, we certainly appreciate you coming up here. And uh, certainly a great turnout here at the stadium. Off. Who are you kidding? <laughs> Uh, that was a big gain there by uh, Quincy High School, and they're going to get up to the 38-yard line. Yeah, well, we've been watching the reruns of prior years and all the mud balls that, the, that they had, and uh, this year the field really does look nice, and the city's very proud of the fact that we're, we're hosting some of the Super Bowls this year, some of the state soccer tournaments, championships, and uh, it's just wonderful to, uh, to be a to be uh, able to, to host those those good games. And it's certainly a, a great publicity for the city of Quincy with the new facilities. Uh, you said Super Bowl games, soccer tournaments, uh, a lot of things happening here in the city of Quincy with this new field. Uh, pass oh, long. long down the field, and it oh. goes incomplete. Pass was intended for Alex Chan. Well, I'll let you guys get back to the game. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Have fun. Th th happy Thanksgiving to you, Mayor. We appreciate you coming in, saying hello. Thanks for coming in, Mayor. Nice to see him. He's in here with his son and daughter, and he is soaking wet. <laughs> uh, we have one booth that uh, is protected from the elements, but he's apparently been out on the field. So we've got a second and ten, John. Eight minutes to go here. Red Raiders looking to stall out the presidents and get the ball back before the half. 8.03 left to go in the half, Jim. As you said, second down in 10. Ball at the 38-yard line. Iron down to a motion. Hand off to Hazelhurst, trying to get outside to the left. And he's going to be unable to. Nice tackle there by North Quincy, number 24 for the Red Raiders, Dave Thompson. Yeah, I'll tell you something. Um, that's one of the things I was talking about earlier, John. Tom's legs looked a little heavy there. He's been out on the field the whole time, been working hard. We, uh, you know, we know he's been out injured, and we're concerned about a fatigue factor. And he just didn't quite get outside with that burst that he had in that first series. So that could be a factor here. He may need to catch a little bit of a break, but I'm sure that Coach Noble would have to drag him off the field to do so. You're seeing a screen there. Uh, our camera woman, Grace Bush, are wiping off the lens there so you can bring you a crisp picture. And it's certainly a tough job up there in the camera trying to keep the lens dry here on a day like today with the wind coming and uh, the rain coming into the booth. But Grace is doing a fantastic job. She's one of the pros at this gym. And oh, yeah. We're going to have a flag on the play. I think they might have taken too much time. We'll see. But you're right about that. Grace is uh, always on her A game. We have her at Adams Field for baseball. Are we going down on the mic? No. Uh, it was a delay of game call. was the call. So a five-yard penalty. They'll move it back now to the 36-yard line, and it'll bring up a third down and 12, Jim. Yeah, what I was going to say, she's facing the same conditions we are, but she's got that big camera to work with, uh, which is a, another component of it. Uh, president's calling a timeout. Coach Noble sensing the importance of this particular possession. He'd like to keep this, uh, he'd like to keep this driver uh, going, and um, we'll see if he's able to do so. Uh, making a little adjustment here. Um, what I was saying was Noble is sensing the importance of this particular drive, John. Mm -hmm. I think that uh, the question is, he's got the Red Raiders kind of back on their uh, hind legs, and he'd like to keep them down. So got a timeout here. We'll see if Quincy can make an adjustment. All right, certainly. So back down to the field. And as you said, it's going to be a third down and 12 for the Presidents. Oil back to pass. And he's going to go to Hazelhurst. Flag thrown on the play, Jim. Hazelhurst crosses the 45-yard line where he's knocked out of bounds. And he's going to get knocked out of bounds at the 47. We'll have to see what the flag is. Yeah, it came from the side, the line judge. So we're going to look for a hold, block in the back, something of that nature. North had nice Five. penetration on that play. Red right. captain, where'd the ball end up? All right, so it is a hold on the president's. 
And they're going to decide where the ball is going to be, where the uh, uh, foul incurred as well. So it was third down and 12. We'll see what the Red Raiders want to do here. They're probably going to have to take the penalty because if not, it'll bring up a fourth down and one. Yeah, well, Coach Connors uh, definitely signaling he wants to move the ball back. Field position is an issue as well. Um, the way the wind's swirling, you never know. By the time Quincy punts, if they're forced to, um, that wind could we be a factor. We're holding. Number 75 on the offense. Repeat third down. Second penalty on Quincy. Um, third penalty on Quincy. I'm corrected here. Uh, this one is a uh, more important one, a bigger penalty. Red Raiders have a shot if they come up with a stop here of getting the ball back. Um, tough conditions for Quincy to pick up a first down. It's third and 22. They've got a uh, swirling wind, which really neutralizes the boil factor. Uh, we'll see what they come up with here. They've got Arredondo. I'm sorry, no, that's Hazelhurst in the backfield. Get Four that. receivers set, John. Jim, this is the second penalty on the drive. Quincy's fourth overall. Four receivers set. Hazelhurst in the backfield. Boy looking down the pass. Being flushed out of the pocket, and he's going to dump it off, but it's going to go incomplete. Pass was intended for number 37 for the presence, Anthony Gilbody, but now it goes incomplete, so bring up a fourth down and 22. The presence will be forced to punt. All right, nice stop by the Red Raiders. Now the offense has to take advantage here, and conversely, the Quincy president defense going to be called upon to step up. Um, first, of course, we have the special teams play, and uh, back for the Red Raiders, we've got number 12, Mike Jay, who uh, has apparently recovered from that tough stick, and number 16, Alex Tregellis. Arndano gets a nice punt off, just gets it off before the attempted block, and Tregellis is going to let it bounce, and it's going to go all the way down to the 41-yard line, and that's where the Red Rays will take over with 6.25 left to go in the first half. Yeah, Arredondo has a nifty way of punting the ball. Um, it's not the traditional football approach of getting air under it, uh, a spiraling high-type punt. He's able to get a particular spin on the ball so that he always gets a 10 or 12-yard bounce to it. And he did there. Very effective punt for the Presidents. Uh, ball's going to be on their 41-yard line of the Red Raiders as Sean McBride brings them out, John, with 6.25 to go in the half. Jim, you can hear the rain pounding our microphones down on the field. Uh, so it's certainly windy and rainy down there. Turning off to Terrence Sibley, and he bounces outside to pick up a nice gain there, Jim. He's going to get across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Terrence Sibley did a nice job to prevent him from getting a big loss there. Instead, he picks up a five-yard gain. Yeah, if you watch this replay, just watch Sibley continue to juke to get outside. Breaks the tackle of Joe Reginini. And it's uh, Hazelhurst who actually stops him. There's the break on the tackle. And watch Tom Hazelhurst. I'll tell you, I really admire Hazelhurst. Great, tough athlete. And uh, as we said, the young man's legs have got to be heavy down there. He's been out there the whole time. Uh, but you would see no sign of it if you're wearing a red shirt. McBride back to pass, and it's almost intercepted by Camilla Arandondo. Pass was intended for the tight end, Marcelo Slee. And Sean McBride is lucky that wasn't picked off. Yeah, nice, uh, nice job there by Arredondo. If you watch the replay, you're going to see what they were trying to do was a little quick hitter to the, the uh, tight end. North Quincy coach Connor seeing the aggressiveness of the presidents and the fact that the linebackers are right up uh, trying to uh, stop the run. What they were trying to do was a little quick hitter to the tight end, get him behind the linebackers. But Arredondo saw the tight end release, covered well, stopped that play, Brings up a third down. Third down and five, Jim. 5.39 left to go in the second quarter. Brian back to pass, looking to his left, and it is incomplete. Slipping on the play over there. Looked like it was number 24, Dave Thompson, being covered over there by Jared Tucker. Yeah, Thompson and McBride continued to not communicate well because uh, Thompson was about 15 yards out there. And uh, meaning 15 yards wide of the line of scrimmage. And um, I would say that McBride threw it about 12 yards. It's just not, he was throwing it to, McBride threw it to the hash mark, and Dave was a little wider than that. So they've got to talk on the sidelines and communicate better. Just not connecting there. Red Raiders are going to punt now with a fourth and five. 
So the president defense, John, as we said, they stepped up, did a nice job. Martin gets the punt off, and Jim Aiken's back for the Presidents, and he's going to let it bounce and takes a fantastic roll for the Red Raiders, and it's going to go all the way down to the 10-yard line, a 20-yard bounce, Jim, on that kick. Yeah, nice job by Dennis Martin, the junior. Um, the special teams play by both squads has been very solid today, John. Martin with a nice punt to follow the Arredondo punt, and uh, the Red Raiders special teams pin the Presidents back just inside the 10-yard line. Now, the last two possessions for the Presidents have uh, not gone particularly well. Uh, we'll see what the Presidents can do with 5.20 to go. Look for them to put some air under the ball here. They may uh, let Boyle throw it a bit, because I just think some of the guys, the linemen and the running backs for Quincy, legs could be a little heavy. They've been out on the field a long time working hard here, John. That's one thing we've talked about, Jim, throughout the season. A lot of kids on these both of these teams play both ways. Yeah, there's going to be a penalty on Hazelhurst. He uh, missed the snap count there. That's going to put him back at the five. Down to the field for the call. We have a dead ball foul. Ball start on the offense. Still first down. That's Quincy's fifth penalty, Jim, here in the first half. Yeah, when you talk about uh, mistake-free football, which we did before the game started, uh, we mentioned it, both coaches mentioned it. Uh, Quincy has been dogged by penalties in this first half. They have not been hurt yet by penalties, however, John. It's affected their field position a bit. Norse had favorable field position, but uh, thus far they haven't really been hurt by it. We'll have to see what happens here. They're inside their five. First and 15 at the five. Aaron Dando goes in motion behind Boyle. Boyle gives it to Hazelhurst. Hazelhurst crosses the 10, and he's going to be up to the 14-yard line. Brought down there and get the number four, number 12 for North Quincy, Mike J. As you can see in the replay here, Jim. Yeah, if you watch this replay, look at this hole that the left side of the president's line opens up for uh, Hazelhurst. Great job of blocking by the president's. Uh, number 65. Steve Cussum and number 74, Mark Cugini, doing a nice job, along with number 64, Alex Domingo. They did a great job of opening up a big hole for Hazelhurst. He took advantage and picked up nine. Second and six. And look at the Hazelhurst one more time. He runs to the right side now, and he's going to get to a 20-yard line. Looks like he's going to be just shy of the first down. Right up there at the marker, Dave Thompson, last guy to get up on the hit. You don't like to see your D-backs uh, making those stops as they are, but you, you want to see the stops made, obviously. But we've seen uh, Dave Thompson, Dave Guerriero making a lot of tackles here, and Alex Tregellis. I'm sure that Coach Connor would like to see his linebackers doing that job. So here it is, third and one. Quincy's done a great job, John. All right, they say he went down at the 19, so he's a third and one. They give it to Hazelhurst, and he has the first down and a few more yards, fighting his way, and he's going to get tackled at the 29-yard line. So a first down for the Presidents. Yeah, if you uh, watch again, Hazelhurst has a nice hole. He hits it quickly and uh, gets it out to the 24, where it's going to be a first and 10. They're going to move the chains. There you see that uh, number 54 for the Red Raiders was in the gap, linebacker Jesse Scamile. He just could not make the stop. So first and ten for the Presidents. Ball at the 24-yard line. 3.30 left to go in the second quarter. Pitch to Hazelhurst. Has a lead blocker out in front of him. And he's going to pick up the first down, Jim. And he's going to get tackled down at the Quincy High School 36-yard line. Nice run there. And a nice lead block thrown by Devon Gillen for the Presidents. Oh, yeah, you're right. And I'll tell you what, I was about to compliment Alex Dragellis, number 16. He had the outside contain, and he did his job. He turned, if you watch here, you're going to watch Hazelhurst on the replay. have to turn it back up inside, but he finds a seam, and he picks up about seven yards after he does turn it up inside. Great run by Hazelhurst. Boy, looking to pass, being pursued, and he's going to dump it off to Tucker. And Tucker's going to be very close to the first down there, Jim. Nice decision by Matt Boyle to dump it off at the last second. He was being pursued there by number 55, R.J. Barden for the Red Raiders. 
Yeah, I'll tell you, I would love to see a replay on this one. What an athletic play. Watch Hazelhurst spin and throw it. He's going out to his left. He's looking to run it right now. Okay, now he makes a decision when he, you see on the uh, left of the screen, Tucker release there. Um, Boyle made a decision to throw the ball, and he spun nicely, throwing across his body. Great job by Matt Boyle. President's on the move, John. Ball at the 48-yard line. Pitch now to Camilla Arndano, trying to get outside to the right. And he does. He's going to have the first down, Jim. He's going to get all the way up now to the 42-yard line. And the presence, as you said, are on the move. Oh, they're banging away here. Nice job. There's some nice play calling going on over on the president's sideline. If you watch the replay here, Arredondo, now the presidents are taking it wide. They're going inside and then outside, inside and outside. And uh, they took it wide there for a nice first down. The clock is running. We've got 2.40 to go in the half. Presidents of first and ten from the 42, leading three to nothing. Two receivers in the slot to the right of Matt Boyle. Iron down to now in motion. And it's going to be a trap now to Iron down up the middle. And Iron down has some space, Jim. He's trying to break free. Fumble on the play. The ball is still loose and is picked up by the Red Raiders. Oh, great job. we got to see the replay here. I don't know who stripped that one. But that was a big play because, as you said, Arredondo was rumbling down the field. And here comes the replay. Watch this. Arredondo with a super individual effort on the counter. You got some great blocks there. He gets through the line. Now we see some daylight, and it's number 11, Dennis Martin, who just strips the ball. Ball's live there. Presidents do a great job. That was uh, Dave Thompson who knocked it loose from Arredondo, and it was covered by the Red Raiders. First and 10, huge turnover. First and 10 from the 22. Sibley trying to get outside. Picks up about four. John, the one issue here is the Presidents have had penalties and they've had turnovers in the first half, but the Red Raiders have yet to take advantage. They've got to make them pay on this possession. Otherwise, the mistakes are meaningless, really. So, Red Raiders have a uh, second and four after the pickup of six by Sibley. Clock running. We're under two minutes here to go in the half. 3 nothing is our score. Quincy's on top. North Quincy trying to capitalize on the turnover. And Terrence Sibley's going to get nowhere on that drive. He met Tom Hazelhurst, and Hazelhurst drove him back. Also over there, excuse me, for Jim, number 75 for the Presidents, Devon Gillen, once again. Yeah, yeah. Um, who called the timeout? Quincy did. So Coach Noble, very aggressively, thinking he's going to get the ball back. It's third and four, showing great confidence in his defense. He's hoping to get the ball back. He's hoping to get the uh, the ball back here with the uh, Red Raiders back at about their 22. So, aggressive call by Coach Noble. Kind of countering the conservative approach taken by Coach Connor. All right, and... Now, now we got a Red yeah, Raider timeout. Now, North Quince is going to come out and call a timeout, change up the play possibly, Jim. Real quick, it is uh, 141 left to go here in the first half. Quincy's on top by a score of 3 nothing. And, Jim, we mentioned at the top of the telecast, uh, turnovers will be the story of the game. Right now, each team has a turnover. North Quincy with an interception and Quincy with a lost fumble. And Quincy, excuse me, North Quincy now has the ball. It is third down and four to go. Ball at the 23-yard line. Split backfield behind Sean McBrien. Thompson wide right. And he's going to dump it off and hit there. Pass was complete to Dave Guerriero at the 26-yard line. And Dave signaling he got the first start. He believes he does. He's obviously got a better view of it than we. Uh, they're going to stop the clock, though, and take a uh, measurement. Interestingly, John, um, when, Dave Thompson, when Dave Thompson split to the right there, he was signaling to Coach Connor to a point on the field as if he were saying, am I in the right spot now? So that issue with communication on where he should be in the field, they're working on it. We'll look to see Dave, uh, who was open on that play, actually. Dave was the deep man, and Dave Guerriero, the short man. They went to the short man, Guerriero. And he came up just short here. I see in the replay, uh, Jim, this last play, and as you say, it's going to come up just a, about a foot short. 
Yeah, there you see Thompson at the right of the screen releasing. He was wide open. They went to the uh, the, the under guy, Guerriero. He came up just short. Coach Connor has his first big decision to make. Uh, he's sending Steve Matos out on the field. Looks like a uh, set of fresh legs for the offense as Sean McBride goes out there as well. So they bring Matos out. They're bringing the sticks back over to the sideline. We'll see. It's going to be a fourth and very short. One thirty-three to go here in this first half. Been a well-played football game, Sean. Both offenses moving the ball successfully. The defense is coming up with big plays when they head to. Thus the, uh, the low-scoring first half. We mentioned kicking when the game began that it could be a factor, and thus far that's been the only scoring. Diego Arredondo with a, uh, what do we say, was a 28-yard field goal, John? Yeah, 28 yards. Check your rain-soaked stat <laughs> sheet there. <laughs> Yeah, it certainly is wet here in the boot gym. Uh, we want to thank you all for watching at home. My name is Jonathan Cleary, being joined by Jim Timmons in the booth. And it is 1.33 left to go in the first half. Quincy is on top by a score of 3 nothing in the 74th annual Thanksgiving Day football game between the Quincy Presidents and the North Quincy Red Raiders. Yeah, Barry Welch is up here with us too, Jared, giving us a little help. He's good with stats and technical assistance. So here it is. Right. Full house backfield. Big fourth down play. Both teams. Fourth and short. They give to Sibley. He goes outside. He has the first down. And more Jim. He crosses the 40-yard line. Now over to the 50. Tiptoeing to stay in bounds. And a big run there by Terrence Sibley. He goes out of bounds at the 40-yard line. He went all the way up to the Quincy 40-yard line. But he stepped out of bounds. Jim, the North Quincy 40. But he has the first down. Yeah, if you watch the replay here, you're going to see Sibley getting wide. And watch when he hits the 40 here. The line judge has him stepping out of bounds right now. Right there. Uh, that, great camera work yeah. by Grace Busher. They pick up that. Yeah, our compliments to Grace. You're right there. He went another 20 yards before he got knocked out, but the line judge was on that play. So clock stop with 1.24 to go. Red Raiders big first down. Try to get down the field and on the scoreboard here. They're going to give it to Sibley one more time. He finds another hole, Jim, and he's going to pick up four yards in that play up to the 44-yard line. I'll tell you, nice job by the Red Raiders. The right side of that line blocking well for Sibley, opening up holes that uh, I think you or I could go through right now. That was Ben Johnson-Tate and Phil Kelly over on the right side here, John, doing a great job. Fifty-four seconds left to go. They're going to give it to Sibley, and he bounces outside, and going to get to the 49-yard line, and it's going to be a third down, third down in short. Yeah, John, also out there is tight end Marcellus Lee, and um, Lee is doing a nice job here of blocking as well. He's doing a super job. So the uh, Red Raiders are third and one at the midfield stripe. Important factor here, John, is the clock. Only 45 seconds left. At halftime, Jim, we're going to be uh, showing some highlights of the, f uh, the season for both these teams. So hope you all stay tuned to that. As you said, 45 seconds left to go in the half. Quincy on top, 3 nothing. John, I will tell you that I saw some of the highlights the other night, the little highlight reel you were running, and I certainly hope that my audio shows up on some of this. <laughs> they may be North and Quincy highlights, but it sounds like a Calerio audio tape, a Calerio <laughs> audio tape there. So. I I'm sure your voice is going to sneak in there a little, okay, Jim. Okay, I'm going to listen very carefully. That is the power of the editing there I have Yeah, you, you got it. Yeah, that's where I fall short. I'm a color man only. John Caleri <laughs> does it all including editing out my audio. <laughs> I hope replay man Bill Early has nothing to do with any of that. Here come the Red Raiders. Another big play. Oh, Third and one. We're going to have a false start, Jim. North yeah. Quincy's going right. to jump quickly. The right side of the line jumped. Yeah, that's a big penalty. Uh, coming when it does with uh, 45 seconds to go on the half, that one's going to hurt. You go from third and one to third and six. Third and dead six. ball foul. False start. Number 73 on the red. 
We're going to see Jim Go here on it. the replay, the false start. And you can see the right side of the line. They jump well before the ball is snapped. And um, we're going to see with no replay, excuse me. So Yeah, we could pass on that yeah, replay. Yeah, so it's third down and six now. Ball at the 44-yard line. So a big penalty, as you said, Jim. Instead of a fourth and short, they have a fourth and six. It's third and six, excuse me. Yeah, they flying back to the pass. Down. And it's complete there. Oh. And Adam Tregell is still on his feet. He was short of the first down, broke a tackle, and now crosses the 50 for the first down. Well, what he did that was super uh, was he took that first hit by number. I, I don't know if that was uh, Hazelhurst or not. I thought it was a number 19. If we watch the replay, unfortunately, we don't have him on our uh, roster. Oh, it, is it Hazelhurst? No. Yeah, there's the first hit. See, he does not go down after that first hit. And that's where that's a big play. Number 19 for the Presidents, who's uh, not on our roster, unfortunately, so we can't give him full credit. Made a great stick and then held on. But taking that hit and getting the first down, big play by Tregellis. So a first down now for the Red Raiders at the 50-yard line. 34 seconds left to go. Pitch to Sibley. He's looking to pass him. Throws it downfield. And it is incomplete. Pass is intended for number 24, Dave Thompson. Over there for the presence, defending number 10, C Captain Jim Akins. I'll tell you, to be honest, that almost looked like a punt, John, the way that one went up. Dave Thompson ended up as a defensive back on that play. So it was uh, covered well, as you s mentioned. If you watch the replay, Jim Akins, the captain, is all over Thompson. And the way the ball went up there, Thompson ended up having to uh, act as if he were a defensive back and just kind of knocked that one down. So Second down and 10, 26, excuse me, 26 seconds left to go in the half. Two receivers wide right of Sean McBrien. McBrien looking to pass over the middle, and it is incomplete. Oh. A big hit there. And let's see, putting the hit on. Was number 84 Alex Chan on number 37 Dave Guerrero, and he looks a little uh, shaken up there. Oh, a little shaken up. I'll tell you, uh, if you watch this replay, we've got a replay here. Here it comes, and watch Guerrero. He, he just released to the right of the screen. Now watch as the ball arrives, bang, and that's a tough spot to get hit. Very, very vulnerable. I think that uh, what Coach Connor saw was accurate. That the presidents may be a little vulnerable in the middle as far as because they're obviously trying to uh, exploit that but the president's hits that's two big hits now that have broken up successful pass plays here comes Sibley you know Sibley over to the right side he'll get up now to the 42 yard line and clock is ticking 12 seconds left to go in the half and coach Connor's going to call a timeout yeah, North gets a timeout there at the 42 they've got time for one maybe two more plays uh, but the president's defense, John, just delivering big hits. I'm watching them head to the sidelines now. It's Joe Reginini, uh, number 10, Jim Akins, Tom Hazelhurst, and then the guy who made the last big hit, Alex Chan. They are looming large in this game, the four defensive backs for uh, Quincy, John. They've uh, been very, very solid. And that's been a, a, a real story in this game. The other story in the first half, at least, is the Red Raider inability to uh, make Quincy pay for its mistakes. They've had a couple of critical penalties, a couple of turnovers, uh, one really big turnover, but the Red Raiders have not made them pay yet, so that could end up being a, a, a story of this game. If you talk about mistake-free football, that's important, but what's more important is that when mistakes are made, you take advantage of them. Red Raiders have yet to do that, so... Here we go. Fourth down and two. McBrien, and it is almost complete there. Number 12, Mike J reached up to grab it, but it was incomplete. Tom Hazlers made sure he did not complete the pass. Yeah, we just got word from Barry Welch that number 19, a guy I know well, Ted Walsh. Uh, unfortunately, he's in our roster under a different number, but Teddy Walsh, a junior, uh, one of the guys will be... Uh, a real leader on the team next year. He's a leader now. He's, he's seen some good playing time, but he's um, 
three-sport athlete for Quincy High. Made that big hit earlier on the sideline when Trugellis was able to shake loose and uh, still get a first down. Here's what is probably going to be the final play of the half. Yes, it is. Boyle takes a knee, and they're going to let the clock run down here, John. All right, so at the end of the first half, Jim, Quincy's on top by a score of 3 to nothing, and uh, it was an exciting first half, Jim. I mean, there wasn't a, a lot of action. As you mentioned, um, a lot of turnovers, or not a lot of turnovers, but a lot of mistakes by both teams, but uh, neither team could really capitalize. Yeah, yeah, I thought there were more mistakes, frankly, by the presidents. Uh, the Red Raiders had a couple of penalties at key points, but uh, the real key mistakes were by the presidents, but they were not made to pay for them. And the president defense played very, very solid. We didn't uh, talk about them enough, frankly, in that first half. But they played great this first half. Put some big hits on the Red Raiders that they're going to feel in the locker room during halftime. All right, the uh, only scoring drive was for the presence on the first drive of the game. Uh, they start at their own 36-yard line, and uh, 8 minutes and 54 seconds later, they drive uh, for a 28-yard field goal by Diego Arandondo, 64 yards on the score. Uh, so the presence were able to drive on that one. Uh, the next position by North Quincy was an interception thrown by Sean McBrien. Uh, it was intercepted by Ted Walsh. And then also Quincy, they had a fumble. Camilla Arandondo fumbled, and North Quincy recovered. That was deep in North Quincy territory. However, North was unable to capitalize on that turnover. Uh, so at the end of the first half, 3 nothing is our score. We're going to take a timeout, and we're going to show some highlights now of the first half, excuse me, of the uh, regular season. Both Quincy presence and the North Quincy Red Raiders will be back after that. Hitches back to pass, evades the sack, looks downfield, has a man, and it is broken up there. Jared Tucker came in at the last moment and broke up that play. Left. Seymour back to pass, looking to his left, and he's going to be stumbled and sacked by Dave Guerriero. Comes up and makes the big sack for the tackle. Will gets it, rolling to his right, rolling, rolling. Pump fakes a couple times, throws it, and in the end zone, a great two-point conversion. Showing blitz on the presidents. They're going to get to Kelleher. And Kelleher fights for a fumble on the play. And Quincy has recovered. In the game. Dashi looks back to pass. Goes downfield. Open man. And it is caught. Nice catch. Lead or release again here. And Brian back to pass. Looking downfield long. And it is caught by Gary Arrow. And he is still on his feet down to the 19 yard line. They'll get. Shippen gets it off. Gilboy is going to field it at his own 15-yard line. Crosses the 25. Has an open space. Jim across the 40. Now over to the 50-yard line. He's knocked out of bounds at the Marshfield Rams 47-yard line. It's an unconventional setup. Watch that snap. They get it to Sibley, who's got four guys in front of him. They bury the play. Actually, it's five guys. They bury the Plymouth North lineman in front of them, and Sibley goes over the top for the score. First and 10 now for the Rams. And nice job by Presidents to come right in and with the tackle, Camilo Arandondo, one of the captains of this President squad. Boyle back in the shotgun, looking downfield, has Tucker in the corner, and it is, he it's good. He got it, he did. Jared Tucker, a great catch. Oh, wow. For the touchdown. As but they will need to go to the air. They do this time, back to pass, and they're going to be sacked. There is Kyle Armstrong. Uh, that is number 53, Nick Izzarelli. Also, there's number 57, big Phil Kelly. Third down and three now for the Panthers. Mata's made a fantastic play. That's going to be fourth down and three now. Turnover, although let's see if they can't play the field position game here. Nice punt by Arandondo. Bounces at the five, and let's that was see. Touched by it was sandwich. touched by Sandwich, it's and it's safety. safety there. For the Red Raiders. Yeah, third and eight from the 24. Fake pass and goes downfield and it is caught by North Quincy for the touchdown. Boyle in the shotgun. Looking downfield and he's going to try to get out of the way and he's nice job by Boyle to get away. He fights free, goes downfield long and it is caught there by number seven, caught Jared Tucker. By Tucker. <laughs> Jared Tucker with the touchdown. Arundando in the backfield along with Boyle. Fake the handoff, and they're going to give it to Aikens at the 50. And he runs up field. Plenty of room for Aikens, and he is still on his feet, and he is going to be going all the way down to the 20-yard oh, line. Run. 
What a run by Akins. All right, and we are underway. It's a short kick, and it's going to be fielded by Whitman Hansen at their own 30-yard line. And they are quickly brought down. Fumble on the play, and looks like Duel Quincy has recovered, waiting for the signal. And yes, they have. 7.30 left to go in the third quarter. McBrien back to pass. He fires, and nice catch by Guerriero. And he breaks a tackle, and he's got to go in for the oh, touchdown. Great effort by Guerriero, John. Dips to develop, so Boyle back to pass. Looking way downfield, looking for Hazelhurst. He's open, and it is caught in oh, a touchdown. Oh, what a play by Boyle. What a throw. Third and 12 now to go. 3.50 left to go in the third quarter. And off again to Neyland. And the ball's been taken away by North Quincy. Going down the field is number 28, John Cahill. And he Great is going to go score. Great play Cahill. He stripped the ball. And he goes 60 yards for a touchdown. The wind is going with the Red Rays right now, Juice. Like you said, you might see them throw the ball with it. They're going to hand off to Terrence Sibley. He gets outside. He crosses the 50-yard line. Sibley with open space. Crosses the 30 now. And 20 to 20. Still on his feet, Jim. And he's going to go oh, for the what touchdown. A run by Sibley. A 68-yard touchdown run by Terrence Sibley. And North Quincy gets on the board. Nope. Yeah, the hand seems on the field. They have four men right to the right of Diego. And they got a good bounce, and they recover it. Hazelhurst recovers the onside, John, just inside the 50. A great onside kick. Welcome back to welcome back to the high school football action, the 74th annual Thanksgiving football game between the Quincy Presidents and North Quincy Red Raiders. My name is Jonathan Caleri. Quincy's on top right now by a score of 3 to nothing at halftime. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back with the second half action after this. everyone to Veterans Memorial Stadium for the second half coverage of the 74th annual Thanksgiving Day football game between the Quincy Presidents and North Quincy Red Raiders. My name is Jonathan Clary, being joined by Jim Timmons. And Jim, the Presidents are on top right now by a score of 3 to nothing. but we talked about it several times here today. Um, both teams haven't capitalized on turnovers and other mistakes that have been given by the other teams. Yeah, you're right. Uh, although Bob Noble, I'm sure, was upset at halftime in the locker room about the turnovers and the penalties, He's got to be grateful for the fact that the Red Raiders didn't take advantage. Uh, so he's got to be happy with what happened. They cleaned things up a little bit, and um, they're going to be okay. Uh, from the Red Raider perspective, the problem you have is uh, those opportunities are gone now. They're not going to come back. They didn't take advantage, and um, so they're going to have to go out and create some new ones this second half. But when they do, they then have to take advantage. That's going to be the story of the game in the second half, whether the Red Raiders can move the ball, John, uh, offensively. The defense played well. Offense has to step it up a bit. All right, we're going to send it down to the field now for the beginning of the second half. You want to receive? Which goal do you want to defend? Put your backs that way. That's Quincy over here. We're starting the second half. North Quincy will be receiving. Shake hands, guys. Have a great second half. Keep up the good work, guys. You're doing great. Keep it up. Okay, North Quincy will be receiving for the beginning of the second half. They'll be defending the north end zone. Quincy will be defending the south end zone. And, Jim, um, in the big first half, uh, the wind was just swirling all over the place. The flag in the uh, northeast corner of the field, um, back and forth to the left and to the right, up and down. No, no one direction that was going to uh, hold the entire first half. Yeah, there was a time when the uh, stands were over on the far side that you got a little bit of relief from it. But uh, right now, that um, so, I guess it's easterly facing side of the field, the side that Quincy's on, it's just wide open. And we've got uh, the elephant grass there over by uh, Furnace Brook. 
you've got that in Black Creek. You've got that swirling around. Uh, you've got the uh, trees over by vet, uh, Varsity Field, the soccer field swirling. So there's a big swirling effect of wind, and it's just coming right across this open field, going to impact things. And it's actually blowing rain right into our booth and Grace Bush's camera angle. So uh, it's a factor on the field. Red Raiders are going to get the ball. Quincy's going to be kicking off, and the Red Raiders are going to go from our left to our right. Uh, they're going from the north to the south. We'll see what they can do here coming out of the locker room, John. They're going to want to see if they can get that offense kick-started here that really hasn't done much today. Well, we're just about ready for the second half beginning here. And the ball fell off the tee. It looks like Jim Akins is going to be holding now for Diego Arandondo. We want to thank you for watching QATV's live coverage of the 74th Annual Thanksgiving football game. We'll start the third quarter right now. Quincy on top by a score of 3 to nothing. Arandondo's kick is going to be fielded at the 19-yard line by North Quincy's Danny Jackson, number 3. And he's going to get across the 30 up to the 31-yard line. And Asheville North will take over at their own 31. Well, North trying to mix it up a little bit. Danny Jackson's a guy who can run. He's got speed. And uh, North looking to free him up a bit. Um, Jackson caught the ball on the far side, trying to turn it up inside, and got stopped just outside the 30, where the Red Raider offense will begin first and 10 with Sean McBride, Terrence Sibley in the backfield. Ball at the 31, and uh, we're going to have a false start there. Dave Guerriero is trying to get an early jump. Yeah, Guerriero, uh, mental error. Not the thing you want to see here coming out of the locker room, one of your seniors. But, again, resilience is going to be an issue. Coach Connor is a very With calm, a dead ball, foul. False start, number 37 on the offense. Still first out. Coach Connor is a calm, collected individual, very poised. Thank you, Bill. And uh, <laughs> he's trying to get his players to think that way. So a mistake like that, he just lets it pass off his shoulders. Tell the Red Raiders to make the next play. And here comes Sibley trying to do so. Sibley's going to get back to Yadge. Lost on the penalty in an extra yard, two up to the 32 now. Uh, excuse me, up to the 27. Uh, so he's going to get a few yards back on that play. Yeah, Reginini with a nice tackle. He did that on his own. Got outside, cut down Sibley. So good job. As we said, that defensive backfield for the Presidents has been huge all game. Tucker, Hazelhurst, Reginini, and number 84, Alex Chan. Gary Arrow goes in motion. Brian looking to pass. He fires, and it's complete to Dragellis. And it's going to be almost a gain of one on the play. We'll see where they spot him. And they're going to get up to the 29-yard line, and it'll be a third down and 12 now, Jim, on the replay, you'll see. Yeah, if you watch this replay, you're going to see that the play never really gets set up. They float Trigellis out to the flat. Um, there was not really a block there for him. He was looking to pick up a block uh, to get outside, and it just didn't happen. And so as a result, um, Red Raiders are now looking at a third down and 12 from just inside their 30. Two receivers to right of McBrien. Brian rolls out, looking back to passing for Dave Thompson, and it is intercepted by Camilo Arandondo. He's going to return it back now. He has some space, and he's brought down there by Tyron Sibley. A great play by, no by Quincy High School, and they'll be in business, Jim, at the 25-yard line. Yeah, if you watch this replay, uh, tough decision here to throw into coverage. Uh, what happens is there's uh, double coverage here. Chan gets his hands on the ball. Arredondo makes the reception. And then you see the how do you do hit uh, by Teddy Walsh as well. So that was a well covered play by the Presidents. And uh, they forced the turnover. Now we'll see as we talked at the half about the Red Raiders not making Quincy pay. Let's see if Quincy can make the Red Raiders pay here early in this second half. 9.24 left to go in the third quarter. And they're going to hit a fumble by the Presidents. And it looked like it might have bounced right into the hands of Jared Tucker. A big break there for the Presidents. Still no signal down the field. And actually, yep, it's going to be called second down. So a big break there for the Presidents. It was a handoff, number 24, Joe Reginini. 
And again, the presidents get a break there, Jim. He's going to be at now at the 26 yard line. Yeah, very alert play by Jared Tucker to get on that ball. Going to be uh, second and 12 for the presidents. What they're doing here, they're giving Hazelhurst a little bit of a break. We talked about that. He might have said something at halftime, John. Boy, looking to pass, and it is incomplete. Pass was intended for number seven, Jared Tucker. Over in coverage was Dave Guerriero. Uh, here comes Hazelhurst now back on the field, as I was uh, mentioning there. They might have uh, taken a look at Tom and how he's holding up and everything, and uh, he was out on the field the entire first half. Um, legs got a little heavy at a few points, although defensively continued to have some blasting hits. So they gave him a little bit of a break there the first few uh, plays out here in the second half. And now he's in the backfield next to Mr. Boyle. Two receivers to the right of Boyle and two receivers to the left. He's going to fire over to the right for Akins and it's complete. Akins crosses the 20 and goes full head of steam up to the 18-yard line. Gary Nero was over there for the tackle. Also over there, number 53 for the Red Raiders, uh, Nick Gazzarelli. And we'll see on the replay here, Jim. Yeah, they're within, uh, if you watch the replay, this one's set up beautifully. This is the type of play the Red Raiders try to run to Tregellis, but they did not get the block. President set that one up beautifully. A lot of green space, and um, they're going to go for it here on fourth down, John. It's fourth and five. Sekou Benjamin also over there on the tackle for the Red Raiders. Fourth down and five. They pitch it to Hazelhurst, and he's stopped there by the Red Raiders coming up there. Number 41, Steve Matos on the tackle. Over there was Benjamin once again, but Matos led the way, Jim. Yeah, great job by the defense. Both defenses have played big. As you said, if you watch this replay, watch Matos come and take Hazelhurst head on, stand him up, and then you've got the gang tackling there. So Red Raider defense steps up big and again a turnover does not hurt so field position wise the Red Raiders are about 10 yards back from where they started um, presidents did nothing there to on the scoreboard so the Red Raiders did not get hurt by that early turnover to start the half they try the run play with Sibley over the left side but uh, presidents say no thank you and stop him cold it's gonna be a second and ten Pat Austin, number 48, the senior defense alignment for the Presidents, came over there to make the stop. So he said, no gain, Jim. Ball in the 20-yard line. Second down in 10. 7.28 left to go in the third quarter. Yeah, and on the line um, for the Presidents, we're going to have to talk about them a little more because... Uh... And it's a handoff now to Tregellis. Yeah, he and won't go down. He got up to the 25-yard line. Matt Orioles playing the nose for the uh, presidents and just doing a super job of taking on the Red Raider offensive lineman. He's given his linebackers a lot of opportunities. And defensive end, Mark Cugini, he's playing the left defensive end, which is the right side of the Red Raiders. He's been very, very solid. Red Raiders running game has had some success in the first half, but here in the second half, they really haven't done anything yet, and it's that solid line play. We'll talk about the right side of the Presidents in a moment. Third down in five. They hand it off to Sibley, and he powers his way, Jim. He's going to be very close to a first down, and it looks like he's going to have it. Yeah, I think he may have got it there, uh, that time. Devon Gillen, number 75, is over on the right side. He got hit by a nice trap block there. Watch this replay. You're going to see Gillen, number 75, stand up his blocker and do a nice job. And as he tries to shed the block, he gets cut down. And uh, a determined Terrence Sibley battling gets down to the uh, first down marker and a little more. It's going to be Red Raiders first and 10 from the 30. We've got 6-10 to go here. And off to Tregellis, and he's going to go nowhere. Jim brought down by number 24, Joe Reginini. Also over Alex Chan over the play, and Alex Chan is a little slow to get up. Yeah, uh, Chan, guy we've talked about, he has laid some wallops out there, but uh, they start to take a toll as well. And uh, Chan and Reginini over here on the president left side, uh, they've been tested all day. They've been uh, getting banged around, 
and both guys starting to feel it a bit. Second down and 10. Split backfield behind McBride. They're going to give it to Sibley. And Sibley was met there immediately. Camillo Arandano came up from his linebacker position to make the tackle. Also, Charles McGee came up to help. Yeah, you're right. Camillo Arredondo got a grab of Sibley's shirt. Sibley saw some green grass in front of him and was uh, unable to move forward because Arredondo got a grab and would not let go. So he stopped that run single-handedly. It's going to bring up a third and eight. Red Raider offense continues to stall here, John, as we're just under five minutes in this third quarter. Gary goes in motion. Brian back to pass, looking for Marcelo Slee. He has a step and is incomplete off the fingertips of Lee. And he, that was a great opportunity for the Red Raiders. Yeah, ball was there. Great pass by McBride. Um, it was there, but you saw it just skid off the hands of Marcelo Slee. Wet football, not much he could do. And you like to see this. I, I used to comment about this last year with Coach Shaughnessy for the Red Raiders. Uh, Coach Connor right over to talk to Lee, gave him a pat on the helmet, probably said something to him about the wet football. That he's got to be more aware of that. But very encouraging, very positive coaching there. Lee's got to make it the next time is what Connor told him, I'm sure. Dennis Martin back to pass, and he just gets the kickoff. Looks like another good one. Taking another friendly bounce. Both these kickers have a way of getting the friendly bounce going, John. And the ball is downed at the 31-yard line by number 60 for the Red Raiders down there on special teams coverage, Eric Adler. Number 48, Pat Austin for the Presidents. Just missed the punt block there, Jim, and he held up as the punt got off. So nice, by, nice job by Austin to prevent the roughing the kicker penalty as well. Yeah, Martin took a little bit of time with that snap there. Um, adjusting the ball to get the laces around and uh, in doing so you're right Austin was in on top of him but nice poise by Martin got away a decent kick now the president offense with a full house backfield changing it up a little John with 430 to go in the in the third quarter they give to Hazelhurst and he runs into his own man Aaron Dondo and nice stop there by number 53 for the Red Raiders, Nick Gizzarelli. Yeah, Gizzarelli with great penetration from the left side. He's all fired up, trying to fire up his teammates as well. And uh, coming off the field right now for the Red Raiders, number 56, got a fairly substantial cast on, John Benoit on the right arm. So he's shaking something off there. But uh, Gizzarelli fired up from the line play there. He and um, R.J. Barden with nice penetration on that first run by the red, uh, by the Presidents. Presidents come up with a full house backfield again. Second down and 10. Pitch to Hazelhurst again. And again, he is stopped there. Dave Guerriero comes up. Also number 28 for the Red Raiders, John Cahill. Yeah, and if you watch again, you're going to see number 53, Gizzarelli, with nice penetration. Watch the replay. Gizzarelli's going to go low on the screen there. You see him. He plugs up that gap. And uh, the Red Raiders' defense continuing to play strongly here with three minutes, 20 seconds to go in this third quarter. Third down and nine for the Presidents. Ball at the 32-yard line. They open it up a little with uh, two flankers. Arm down to a motion. Boyle looking for him, and it's complete. But Dave Garrett comes up, and Dave Thompson's going to finish him up, so no gain on that play. Yeah, nice job by Guerriero. We came out and made the initial hit. Uh, Dennis Martin was over there. So the Red Raider defense with a very, very solid stop here on the Presidents. Presidents go three and out with 2.50 to go in the third quarter. Again, though, John, Red Raider offense now has to step up. Got to do something. They've got, uh, let me see, back for the Red Raiders for this punt. It's going to be Mike Jay and uh, I believe it's Tregellis, Adam Tregellis, or Alex Tregellis, rather. And it's going to bounce, and Tregellis is going to field it at the 34-yard line, and he's brought down immediately there. Nice coverage down the field by Camilla Arandando for the Presidents. Yeah, nice job by Tregellis. That's why he's back there, John. He's a sure-handed guy. Um, he fielded that ball had he not. We were probably looking at another 10-yard uh, roll there. 
So he picked it up, got the ball back to the 36. Red Raiders, again, have decent field position, but they have to do something with that field position. Get a drive going here. 2.20 left to go in the third quarter. Quincy on top by a score of 3 to nothing. North at their own 36-yard line. Excuse me, Jim. No, I was just going to say, McBride hurrying out with the play. They've got to be careful here about their time. So... Dennis Martin goes wide right, Sean McBrien. Guerrero in motion. They give it to Dave Guerrero. And he goes up the left side. He puts up the first down and more. Trying to deke out Jared Tucker. And he does. And he's going to get up now to the 31-yard line. A big run by Dave Guerrero. I'll tell you what. If Grace Busher could pan away, you watch that run by. We're going to watch the replay. But after that, if Grace could pan away, Red Raider to sidelines all fired up. Watch Guerriero. He lets the block set up here. Now it's just him and Jared Tucker. Puts a little juke on him. And uh, nice job by the Presidents. Good pursuit by number 42 for the Presidents. In on the tackle, Diego Arredondo. Red Raiders all fired up now. They're at the President 30 off the big run by Dave Guerriero. And at the sibling, he's brought down immediately there. Nice job by Camilo Arredondo and Diego Arredondo. Wow. You don't want to be at that Thanksgiving table at the Arredondo <laughs> household. You don't want to get between them and the turkey at least. What a pop on Terrence Sibley. And one thing we've seen about Sibley this year, he is a very substantial young man, and he can take a hit. Well, he just got popped and knocked right down in his tracks at the 32-yard line. Going to be a second and 12. Clock ticking down on this third quarter, John. 1.15 to go. Third down and 12, as you mentioned, Jim. Split backfield behind Sean McBrien. They're going to pitch now to Adam Tregellis. And he's going to pick up a nice gain there, get up to the 25-yard line. And as you can hear there, the, ch fear, uh, the chance of the, all the fans from North Quincy High School are trying to get their team going. Yeah, this time you're going to see some blocking here. Tregellis has somewhere to go. As you watch here, watch the blocking set up for him. And then he's got Sibley out there as a lead block. So Tregellis that time had an opportunity, took advantage, gets it out uh, inside the 25. And it's going to be a third down and three. Big third down play for the Red Raiders. Looking to keep this drive alive. As you mentioned, third and three. Ball at the 25-yard line. This is probably going to be the last play of the quarter. 20 seconds left to go. They hand out to Sibley, and he's fighting his way, Jim. He's going to be very close to a first down, and they spot him at the 20-yard line. That should be enough. Yeah, I think he got the first down there. They're moving the chain, so the drive is alive here, and I think the Red Raiders are going to let the clock run down. We're under 15 seconds. Um, Sean McBride is walking back toward the sideline so they're going to let the clock run out we're going to go down to the north side of the field and it's going to be a three nothing president lead as the third quarter ends but the red raiders have something going here trying to get their fans fired up as we end the third quarter john all right so that is the end of the third quarter jim three nothing is our score but the presidents are driving here and the fans on the north quincy side they are going wild we finally have something to cheer about jim and uh the north quincy red raiders a couple of big plays uh namely a 36 yard run by dave guerriero to get them up into president's territory yeah you're right that was a very encouraging third quarter uh dave guerriero adam tregellis firing up their teammates you like to see the seniors make plays and uh dave guerriero made a super run there uh that just got everything going for that red raider offense it's almost as if they finally flipped the switch and got something going so we'll see what happens here if they can finish this drive got to remember though this president defense john has been rock solid all game uh they're being challenged now we'll see how they step up as we begin the fourth quarter one of the other stories we've been talking about the entire game turnovers and neither team has been able to capitalize same story the very first drive uh, north quincy's interception it was tipped by alex chin intercepted by camilla arandondo but quincy could not capitalize yeah well um in a way you're happy to see that too though you don't want to see one of the young men feel like his era cost them something so we're going to go back to the field here All right. and uh big fourth quarter all right, we're back to the field now. Oh 
at the 20-yard line, handoff to Adam Tregellis, and he cuts upside to the 15-yard line now. Nice run there on first down for North Quincy. Yeah, they seem to be firing on all cylinders right now. You can see green space now for the running back. If you watch this replay, when Tregellis gets the ball, the blocks have set up, and he's got somewhere to go. He gets outside, turns the corner. They're starting to work that right side a bit, John. Red Raiders um, moving down the right sideline. They're over on the right hash mark now, though, so we'll see if they don't come back this way. But they've been working the right side of the field successfully thus far. Hand off again to Terrence Sibley. He's going to have the first down and more again to the right side there, Jim. And one man on the right sideline there, Phil Kelly. He's a big man, but he can certainly get up there and move. Yep, they're inside the 10. It's going to be a first and goal for the Red Raiders. Big, big drive for North Quincy. So first and 10, uh, 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 first and goal, I should say, from just inside the 10. They're on the hash mark, looking to bang the ball in here. They're going to split Dave Thompson wide right, and then they've got a wingman, a slot man, I should say, on the left. Hand off to uh, Guerriero. He's going to go down to the one-yard line, Jim. Diego Arandondo brought him down and saved the touchdown run. Yeah, now watch this replay here. You're going to see Guerriero patiently wait for a block to set up. He's got the ball. He's waiting, waiting. He gets the block, and then, boom, hits the hole. Now, he sees green in front of him, but as you said, Arredondo made a touchdown saving tackle. But again, Dave Guerriero showing tremendous leadership. It's been his two big runs here that have got North Quincy knocking on the doorstep here. Second down and goal. Ball at the one-yard line, Jim. Full house backfield for the Red Raiders. McBride on the side. He's going to keep it himself, Jim. And no signal yet. And touchdown, Red, Red Raiders. Red Raiders score. Red Raiders get on the board. A fantastic drive, Jim. Started at their own 36-yard line. A 64-yard drive. Yeah, if you watch this replay, you're going to see McBride. He's just going to sneak it right in going to follow his lineman in we mentioned them before the names but he just tucked in behind Roger Kufod his center and uh, tucked the ball into the end zone for the Red Raiders first points Red Raiders now are uh, setting up for the point after this could be a big point after too given the fact that Quincy's capable of field goal kick is up and it is good so the kick is good by Dave Guerrero, and North Quincy takes the lead, Jim, with 9.06 left to go in the game, 7-3. to three. Yeah, and although a point after is deemed to be kind of a routine event if you watch college or professional football, in high school, it's important. It can be a big thing, and to have a kicker you can rely on is important. Well, Dave Guerrero splitting the uprights there just took away the luxury of Quincy to tie this with a field goal. Quincy's going to have to get in for six in order to reclaim the lead. We've got nine minutes to go here in this fourth quarter, John. Red Raider sideline fired up. The crowd's fired up. And uh, they're turning the ball back over to their special teams and defensive unit, basically, uh, from the red shirt side of the field. They've got the lead, 7-3. to three, And now the presidents have got to come back. This is where the decision early on uh, by Coach Noble should pay dividends. Uh, they gave Tom Hazelhurst a little bit of a break coming out in the third quarter. You know that Tom's going to be all fired up here with nine minutes to go. Last nine minutes of his high school career. So we'll look for the gas to be back in those Hazelhurst legs and for the presidents to start to lean on him as they take possession here after this kick. Squib kick going to be filled at the 35-yard line by Diego Arandondo. He pile drives his way through there, Jim, up to the 46-yard line. And that's where the presence will take over. Again, Coach Connor, staying conservative, wants to stay away from the big play. Went with a squib kick right down the middle so they'd be sure to get the coverage. But the, uh, the negative of that is that the presidents have great field position. They're going to be just short of their 50. They're going to start first and 10 at the 47 with nine minutes to go. Jim, one thing I want to mention is the crowd here at Veterans Memorial Stadium has been fantastic, and even though it's been raining and it's been a really miserable day, the fans have stayed here for this game. It's been a fantastic game they've been seeing. 
First down and 10 now for the Presidents. Trap play to Arundondo, and North Quincy is right on top of him there. Number 55 leading the way, R.J. Barden. Yeah, R.J. Barden with a big tackle, and also in on the tackle, number 41, Steve Matos. If you watch the replay, Barden not fooled at all. Nice little counter trap. Barden sheds his block, makes the big tackle. Great job by R.J. Matos in there to finish him off, along with number 50, Sekou Benjamin. So Red Raider defense coming up big there. It's going to be second and 12. Second and 12, 820 left to go in the game. Boyle looking to pass. He's going to set the screen to Tom Hazelhurst. He has it. He crosses the 50-yard line and is going to get all the way up now to the 45-yard line. Nice gain there by the Presidents. Yeah, you're right. He got a nice block out on the flat. But you, as you know, when you get the ball in the hands of Hazelhurst, you're going to get something productive. If you watch this replay, he's going to get one nice block out on the flat here. It's uh, big number 74 for the Presidents. Uh, pulling from his uh, left guard spot, Mark Cugini. He got the lead block, then the nice effort by Hazelhurst. Going to be third down and four. Third and four. And they hand it off to Hazelhurst. And he is stopped in the backfield by the North Quincy Red Raiders. Dave Guerriero comes up and makes the stop. Yeah, what a hit. Guerriero has been keying on Hazelhurst since uh, late in the first quarter. If you watch this replay, you're going to see from the right side of the screen, number 37, just come up and plug that hole. He keyed on Hazelhurst, made the stop. Red Raider sidelines all fired up here as the defense comes up big with the stop. Uh, presidents bring in Arredondo to punt. Red Raiders have no one back yet. It's a little confusion on this part of the Red Raiders. They have no one back for this punt. Yeah, a great punt it is by Arredondo. Quincy's going to try to get down there, and it goes into the end zone. Yeah. So North Quincy will take over at the 20. Yeah, Red Raiders caught a bit of a break there. I don't know if that was intentional or not. It, it may have been. Coach Connor has been trying to play conservative and mistake-free. It has paid off because the Red Raiders, apps, you know, with the exception of one turnover that they were not hurt on, they have played pretty solidly. Uh, but that time, as the uh, president set up to punt, uh, Red Raiders had no one back at all. The ball hit just outside the 20 and rolled through the end zone. So they caught a break there, the Red Raiders did. Tough break for the presidents. With 6.46 to go, John, the Red Raiders pick up the ball, put the game in the hands of their offense. The momentum has certainly swung here. Jim, handoff to Terrence Sibley. And it's going to be no gain there. Arundondo comes up. Camilla Arundondo. Also, Charles McGee on the tackle. Yeah, Charles McGee with a solid hit. He just wrapped up Sibley and took him down. Great job by uh, Charles McGee. So the clock is going to run, which the Red Raiders are happy with. It's second and ten at the 20. Clock ticking down here in the game, Jim. Coming up on six minutes left to go. Split backfield behind Sean McBrien. And they give it to Dave Guerriero. Simply leading the way for a block, and Guerriero's going to get up to the 25-yard line, and they'll bring up a third down and five. Yeah, nice little five-yard run. Again, Guerriero's showing good poise there. He lets his block set up ahead of him, follows him, Nothing quite opened up there as the president defense did a nice job of stopping things. Red Raiders had been picking on that right side of the, uh, well, actually the left side of the president defense. They had been going right most of the way. Uh, this first drive, they try to take it wide on the left. We'll see if they don't go right this time. They're over in the left hash. They've had success going to their right. Let's see if they don't do so here. Could be a flag in play, and there is Jim McBrien back to pass. And he's just going to throw it away, but it looks like it could be an offsides call on the Presidents. Yeah, I think McBride's aware of what happened there. He just threw the ball away. Again, very conservative, very mistake-free. He, uh, he was aware of the encroachment. Yeah, he's signaling. Yeah, we're going to take a quick look at this replay. You're going to see what McBride saw. The lineman jumped. I think McBride had happened right in front of him. 
So McBride was aware of it, and that's why he threw the ball away. And so the Red Raiders are going to move the chains here with a first down. 5.14 to go. This is a big drive for both teams, John. Presidents have to come up with a stop. So first and 10 now for the Red Raiders. Ball at the 30-yard line. Dave Thompson brings in the play from the sideline to Sean McBrien. Sibley, the lone man in the backfield. Guerrero goes in motion and they hand it to him. And Camille Arndana comes up to make the initial hit. And helping up there to finish things up, number 75, Devon Gillen for the Presidents. I'll tell you, the Arredondo brothers have just played super all game. Really first class stuff. And that time, great penetration by number 33, the captain, Camillo. Made the stop on um, Guerrero. You're going to see the replay here. And you see number 33, well, no, that's the back end of the play. But it's number 33 getting up at the top of your screen who actually made that play. So clock running, we're at 4.30, which the Red Raiders are happy about, second and 10. And it's the John Cahill who's now in the ball game. And on second down, Jim, he's going to get up to about the 33-yard line. Bring up a third down and seven to go for the Red Raiders. Yeah, again, trying that right side. Uh, big number 73 for North Quincy, one of the last guys to get up after that play, Ben Johnson-Tate. He has just been huge all game. They've been running behind him, and he's tired right now, but he's hanging tough. They ran the ball up the right side, picked up about three. Um, they're just outside. They're at their 33-yard line. We're under four minutes. We're at 350 and ticking, John. Another big factor here. McBride looking back to pass. Fires, and it is incomplete. Laying out for it there, Jim, was Dennis Martin, but he could not reel it in. Yeah, he had Adam Tregellis underneath, who was just short of the marker, but Dennis Martin would have had a first down if he could have picked that one up, but, or if he could have uh, caught that ball, but it was a tough one. Dennis was fully extended at the sideline. Again, this is um, all part of execution coaching. Uh, Sean McBride is throwing at particular targets. The first down marker is at the 40. McBride threw right at the, the corner there at the 40. And um, Martin was a little late getting there. Fully extended, as you said. Couldn't quite pick up the first. Here's Martin. Martin gets the ball. is blocked there, Jim. And the Presidents recovered deep in North Quincy territory. Wow. Great job by the Presidents. Big, big play. 3.30 to go, and the Presidents with a huge play on special teams. It looked like it might be number 48 on the punt block there, Jim. And Pat Austin coming up with a big play for the Presidents. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to watch the replay. Martin setting the ball a little slow again. He takes his steps, and there it is. Look at number 48 get up. You're right, it was Austin. What a play. So now the game in the hands of the president offense. Matt Boyle under center just outside the 10. Boyle looking to pass, looking downfield, has a man open, and it is touchdown, Presidents! First play after the turnover, and the Presidents get on the board. Alex Chan with a touchdown. Wow, great call by Noble. They went right at him. Boyle delivers into the end zone, so... A great special teams play, and then the president offense takes advantage almost immediately. If you watch the replay, Boyle rolling out to his right. He's got four guys down there, and he picks the right one. It was Chan. So the presidents do a great job of creating an opportunity and then taking advantage, and they take the lead back, John. It's now 9-7. to seven. This is going to be a big extra point. Good snap, good hold. Kick is up. And it is good. It's good. So big the extra point there. The yep. president's able to convert. And as we talked about, Jim, turnovers, but now being an unable to convert on them, well, the president's come up with a big punt block. And then the first play, a 13-yard touchdown pass from Matt Boyle to Alex Chan. Yep, and um, I'll tell you, the game is in reach for the Red Raiders. Um, they're only down three. 
a little deflated after that costly special teams uh, miscue, but Coach Connor in the middle of the huddle here, talking to his boys, trying to keep them fired up. They've moved the ball well offensively the last two times they've had it. They're going to have to come up with something here. 3.30 to go, John. 10-7. This is what you want to see Thanksgiving Day and Veterans Stadium. It's a great ball game. Yeah, it certainly is, Jim, and usually when these two teams get together, it is always a great game. Uh, the intensity is certainly high on both both teams and on both sidelines, and uh, during that last series, both all the fans here at the stadium were on their feet cheering, trying to get their teams pumped up, and uh, the Quincy High fans were able to get a little bit of an extra boost there with that block and touchdown. Yeah, they've got Jackson and Mike J back for the Red Raiders. They're at about their 20. Got a couple of up backs ready to go as well. This is going to be big. Every play now with 3.30 to go is going to be big, both sides here. 10-7 to 7 is our score. Quincy on top. Trying to make it eight in a row, Jim, on Thanksgiving Day. It's going to be fielded at the 20 by Danny Jackson. Crosses the 30, now 35 to the 40. Has some more spacing, gets up to the 45-yard line. Nice return there by Danny Jackson. Yeah, they're taught to run up the middle, let the wedge get set up, and that's what Jackson did. Got the ball to the 45. Good job by the Red Raiders. Very solid return. Great field position with 3.20 to go. That swirling wind, though, is swirling in the face of the Red Raiders. It's actually blowing a little bit into our booth again. Uh, so that means it's in the face of the Red Raiders. So let's see what they can do. McBrien back to pass on first down, and it is complete. Dennis Martin takes the hit from Alex Chan, but is able to bring it in for the catch. Yeah, it's just that quick little turn in route. Uh, if you watch the replay, uh, you're going to see Martin, as you say, take the hit and hold on. Ball a little behind him, but he does a nice job of holding on. And the Red Raiders have a uh, second and five. Clock running with 2.50 to go. Ball in the Quincy High School 49-yard line. Second down and four. Hand off to Sibley. Up the middle, and he has a first down. Terrence Sibley dies for the first down, Jim, and gets it. Yeah, nice individual effort by Sibley. Did a great job. He uh, just goes right right we're gonna watch the replay you're gonna see him just tuck right in behind the left guard you see big number 56 and number 53 53 for the red raiders opening up that hole for sibley it's gizzarelli and john benoit and he picks up a first down they move the chains we've got 220 to go john two two uh, two backfield in them in the backfield for the red raiders and they're gonna give it to sibley and he's going to get a gain of one on the play there. Looks like Charles McGee on the tackle for the uh, Presidents. Yeah, they're uh, alternating guys here. He's sending Mike J in. They're alternating their receivers. He went with a split backfield there. You know that they're trying to run this. They're trying to pop something. I'd like to see Dave Guerriero get another opportunity here. He's in the wing position, in motion, gets the ball. They give it to Gary. He hops over the defender and gets up now to the 40-yard line. Dave Guerrero made a nice job on that play. You hop over two defenders and pick up a gain of four on the play. Yep, and uh, more importantly, he's limping a little bit. He's the field goal guy. If you watch the replay, you're going to see him hop up. He gets banged up pretty good. Red Raiders get a timeout with 1.37 to go, John. Um, Coach Connor's got them in the huddle there talking. They've got 137. They're on the 40. Uh, very interesting here as far as options go because this is a tough, tough win for a field goal situation. Um, you're not on the, the proper side of the field. They had a little bit of an edge on the south side, but on the north side, tough, tough win. So um, I'm not quite sure how the coaching staff would look at it if presented with a field goal opportunity here. But time is a factor. There's 137 to go, John. 10-7 presidents. Ball at the 40-yard line. It's going to bring up a third down and seven now, Jim, for the Red Raiders. 
Real quick, while we have this timeout, we want to remind all of our viewers, if you're interested in when this game is going to replay on Quincy Access Television, log on to our website at www.qatv.org for all your program schedule information. So third down and seven now to go for the Red Raiders. Ball at the 40-yard line. 1.37 left to go in the game. They hand it off to Tregellis. He cuts up side. He is oh! brought down. Camilo Arandondo. Arandondo. Camilo Arandondo with a big hit. And also for number 48, Pat Austin. Two names we've called out numerous times here tonight, Jim. Uh, uh, for yeah, this game. here comes the replay. This could be the play of the game because as you watch... Tregellis has green space if he turns that corner, and boom, Arredondo comes from nowhere. From our vantage point in the booth, John, I thought he had something there. A lot of green space. The blocks had set up well. Red Raiders trying to pick on that left side of the president defense again, going right. And um, Arredondo came from nowhere, penetrating linebacker, and made a huge stop. And that's going to bring up fourth down. Although this is obviously the play of the game, that last one may have been the play of the game there. That stop by Arredondo. Could have been the defensive stop, as you said, Jim. And Arredondo came through. Looked like one of the guys was pulling for North Quincy. He came through that, that hole on the backside of the play and to make the tackle. Yeah, he shot that gap beautifully and made a tremendous individual effort to make the stop. So this is it. It's uh, fourth and six. 126 to go. This is what it's about. We're going to see if the Red Raiders can do something. They bring out a new dry football. Well, they try to get a new football on the field. Didn't work. Got Dave Thompson over here on the left. Two receivers split wide to the right. Terrence Sibley in the backfield. McBrien back to pass. Looking, looking. Throws downfield for Guerrero. And it is incomplete. Dave Guerrero could not bring it in. Go for it. But it falls incomplete, and it'll be a turnover and downs. Quincy will take over. Yeah, they just missed that connection if you watch this replay. McBride throws a nice ball, gets it up there, and Guerriero fully extends, just misses. For the one of about a yard, they had something there. They just missed the connection, and... Um, it's going to be interesting here, John. I don't know that with 119 to go, even if the Red Raiders come up with a stop, if there's going to be enough here for them to do something. All the presidents have to do is run out the clock here. Uh, Red Raiders have used one timeout, I believe. So we'll have to see what they do. You know they'll be calling timeout immediately here if they get the stop. Three receivers to the right of Matt Boyle. Hazelhurst in the backfield. They give it to Hazelhurst. And he runs up, and as you say, Coach Jim Conner calls timeout immediately. Gain of one on the play. 1.15 to go. Hazelhurst picked up about one, one and a half yards, but that's not really the issue. And again, what will happen is, even if the Red Raiders do come up with a stop, the way arredondo has been punting the ball, they're going to be looking at about 70 yards at least um, with well under a minute to go. So... We're at 115 here. 115. Second down and nine now. Ball at the 41 yard line. Hazelhurst, the Lomi in the backfield. They pitch it to him. He runs out to the right side, and he's going to get brought down for a loss there, Jim. Dave Guerriero was over there. Also, Dave Thompson for the Red Raiders. Yeah, Guerriero made the initial hit on Hazelhurst, wrapped him up for a bit of a loss. Going to bring up a third and 12, and we've got 109 to go. Red Ray is doing a nice job here, Jim, to try and prevent the presence from advancing the ball. I just said 109 left to go in the game. Quincy on top by a score of 10 to 7. Quincy had a huge punt block by Pat Austin, and the very next play was a touchdown pass from Boyle to Chan to take the lead. Yeah, I don't know if North Quincy has a punt block in their portfolio, but that's what they're going to need if they come up with a stop here. Uh, Boyle sees something calls a timeout. So I'll tell you, it would not surprise me one bit if Boyle's over there telling Coach Noble about the fact that if we send someone, I can hit him. Because the Red Raiders are all up there trying to make the stop. And um, Quincy's had a bit of gunslinger in it all season long. Had some successes with that as well. So you see Coach Connor now talking to his guys as well. I think they're out of timeouts. I think that's what he just indicated to his guys. No timeouts. 
Everyone up on the line for the Red Raiders. Three receivers to the right. Trap play to Arundondo, and he has stood up there at the 40-yard line. Number 26, Ephraim Melendez on the hit. Yeah, nice job by Melendez. And uh, they, North Quincy called a timeout. I think Coach Connor was saying they had one timeout left, Jim, okay. uh, when he went out into the field. So that's their last timeout. Clock does stop, though, with 103 left to go in the game, and Quincy will be forced to punt the ball away. All right, so North Quincy has one more possession. They've got the replay ready here for us. And if you watch Melendez, nice stop on the counter. There it is. There's the hit. He gets a little bit of help by number 50 for the Red Raiders, Sekou Benjamin. They make the stop. They combine to make the stop. And now the Presidents have to successfully execute their special teams punt here. And... Uh, They'll be in very good position. Under a minute to go. We're at 103 now, but if they can punt this ball away successfully, be under a minute to go. Right, Red North Raiders got everybody up. And we might have a delay of game penalty here, Jim. The back judge threw a flag. We're going to go down to the call. Foul, foul. Illegal substitution. 12 men on the field. Five-yard penalty. All right, so it's penalty against North Quincy. Twelve men on the field. So it'll be a five-yard penalty. You move the ball to the 45-yard line. North Quincy, excuse me, Quincy will still be forced to punt. I think we just found out about the uh, Red Raiders punt block play. All right, so, so yeah, the Red Raiders have everyone up to try to block this punt. And no good. And no one is back to receive the ball. And it will take a bounce. Bounces at the 15 and it's going to stop at the 12 yard line Dennis Martin was trying it down there uh, to try and throw a block and he might be hurt Jim he is laying down now on the 16 yard line yeah his ankle it also slow to get up uh, at the other end of the field here he tried to make the block on the play is Sekou Benjamin and Sekou is limping off as well Martin is coming off slowly Sekou Benjamin coming off slowly Red Raiders tried to come up with the uh, block but could not do so so now they've got to go 89 yards in 50 seconds. That's an awful lot to ask of this offense in light of uh, what's going on today. Their success has been on the ground running, and uh, they're out of timeout. So it's going to be it's an awful lot for them to, uh, to take on here. But Coach Conn has got them in the huddle. Other side of the field, the president's. All around their uh, defensive coach, Coach Reardon. And, uh, you know, he's fired up and he's got them fired up. They come up with this final stop here. And they're going to stretch the streak to eight. 50 seconds left to go in the game. They're going to spot the ball at the 13-yard line. So that's when North Quincy will take over. Presidents are on top by a score of 10 to 7. It's been a fantastic game here tonight, Jim. The 74th edition of this classic rivalry here in the city of Quincy. Three receivers to the right of Sean McBrien. Back to pass. They're going to try to set up a screen to Sibley. And Charles McGee tries to cannot make the hit. Sibley breaks free. And he's going to get out of bounds, importantly. Well, let's see what the side judge says. As you know, they're going to keep the clock running. running. Yeah. Clock's running. All right, we're going to keep it down the field. North Quincy. Picks up five on that play, so it's second down and five. And now we have a whistle. They're going to switch footballs. All right. They're going to get that one off the field. All right, North Quincy's going to catch a little bit of a break there, Jim, with the uh, officials calling timeout to switch the footballs. 28 seconds left to go. And they start the clock. And Brian back to pass. Looking for Tregellis. Has him at the 25-yard line. And he's going to go up to the 30-yard line where he is brought down. Clock is still running. Coach Conn is telling McBride to spike the ball. We're at 12 seconds now. North Quincy sets up quickly. And they spike the ball with 10 seconds left to go. Yeah, uh, Coach Connor is talking to the official about the time that was lost. He's uh, claiming that the clock should have stopped once they picked up the first down. And that at that juncture, there were about 16 seconds left. But uh, the officials are hearing none of it. So that's a tough one. He wanted the clock to stop while they moved the chains. 
North actually spiked the ball while the chains were being moved, so it's uh, second and ten. Ten seconds to go here. Ball is on the 30-yard line, Jim. Four receivers set for the Red Raiders. Brian was out to his right, looking downfield, looking for Guerrero, and it is tipped away, tipped away by number 82, James Fay, for the Presidents. Three seconds on the clock. Yeah, very, uh, very tough situation here. Guerrero was triple teamed, as you see on the replay, and as you said, it was Jim Fay who knocked that one away. Um, here it is. You see that Guerrero is completely surrounded. And Quincy's going to call a timeout there, Jim. Uh, four players are all around there trying to knock that ball down, and Faye was the one who got his hands on it to knock it down. So yeah, all Reardon did there was get a quick 20-second timeout, tell his boys, you know, he just wanted them to reset. He didn't want North to come to the line quickly or anything. And, um, you know, provided there's no penalty here, then I think what you're going to see is uh, the president's... Uh, they're going to take home their eighth in a row here. I think one of the other things, too, Jim, is they always certainly tell teams on this situation, knock the ball down. Don't try to intercept it. Just knock it down to the ground and let it go incomplete. Yeah, that's what Faye did on that last one. So three seconds left to go. Quincy on top by a score of 10-7. to 7. North Quincy needs to go 70 yards to try to win or tie this game. And throw up the field, and it goes incomplete, and the Quincy Presidents have won their eighth in a row on Thanksgiving Day. Yeah, they charge the field. You see the white shirts coming out here. They're really uh, pumped up. A super victory by the Presidents. As what happened here was the Red Raiders took control in the second half and looked like they were going to take home their first victory in a while. But a great play on special teams by Austin and followed quickly by an offensive strike by the Presidents. And they take home a 10-7 victory here. Thanksgiving 2006. So a fantastic game here at Veterans Memorial Stadium. As you said, 10 to 7 is our score. The Presidents get their eighth in a row, 12 out of the, excuse me, 11 out of the last 12. So a fantastic run here for the Quincy Presidents, and Coach Bob Noel keeps his perfect streak intact. Yeah, and that's quite a remarkable streak as well for a Coach to have uh, been part of eight consecutive victories, and that's 12 out of the last 13 as well. So. It's uh, quite a streak. Coach Noble's going to be delighted. He can go back to the chalkboard now and get ready for 2007 with a little peace of mind here. But uh, a very gutsy effort by the Presidents, John. Their defense played solid the whole game. Offense was a little spotty, but they came up big when they had to there in that fourth quarter. Yeah, they certainly did real quick. In the first quarter, uh, Quincy High School got on the board extremely quick. Uh, it was a 36-yard drive. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, 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 36-yard drive. And it was a 28-yard field goal by Diego Arandondo. That put Quincy up by a score of 3 to nothing. One of the other things, a couple of turnovers in the first half. Neither team could capitalize, Jim. And the same thing in the second half. We talked about capitalizing on turnovers and Quincy came up big it was a field goal excuse me a punt block uh, by Pat Austin with 646 left to go and uh, they were able to prevent that uh, punt and go in for the touchdown the next play it was a 13-yard touchdown pass from Boyle to Alex Chan yeah and we're happy to say that it was not a mistake that determined the outcome of the game it was more a superb individual effort by Austin the block was there on special teams and when I watch Martin on the replay he, he really wasn't slow setting that up. He took his stride. He was about to deliver the punt. It was just a phenomenal individual effort by Austin, who just launched. And he happened to take the hit off the block and get up even higher. So tremendous individual effort created an opportunity for the Presidents. And then uh, Mr. Boyle delivered there that strike to Chan. So uh, great stuff by the Presidents here. And they... A hard-earned, well-deserved victory, 10-7. Yes, yeah, certainly. And that punt block came in a very important time, too. North Quincy had looked like they were going to take momentum away from the Presidents, and they had. Uh, it was two punts in a row, and then North Quincy got the ball back on their own 36-yard line. They drove 64 yards down the field for a touchdown run. Sean McBride punched it in from one yard out, and the momentum was a complete 180 there, Jim. North Quincy had taken it over, unfortunately, another punt from Quincy after that, and they were punting themselves, but Quincy just came up big when it needed it. Yeah, you're right. And 
and um, we give them credit. Give the Red Raiders a lot of credit. They played a very solid football game. Dave Guerriero certainly can hold his head high. He uh, ignited that Red Raider offense here in the second half, got them going. Um, the Tregellis brothers, particularly Adam, he had a nice run there. So a lot of names here to mention, uh, but the boys played very well wearing the red shirts today. They can hold their heads high as well. They had the game in control, as you said, but the Presidents made a couple of big plays. So super Thanksgiving Day football game. They've mentioned in our earphones that they have replays, so you may want to go over that chart. Yeah, we're going to cut to the highlights now, and I think the first one we have is the interception by Camilo Arandondo, uh to begin the third quarter. And... Um, well, we right down the field now. You can see here on the replay, and it was tipped there by Aaron Dondo, and he is running it back, and he runs it back for the Quincy Presidents. So a nice job by Aaron Dondo to get them off quickly here in the third quarter. Uh, so as we're running through some of the highlights here, Jim, um, a fantastic season. Well, I shouldn't say a fantastic season, uh, but certainly a good way to end it for the Presidents here. And, you know, a, a win on Thanksgiving Day is always a positive one for no matter which team wins. Yeah, that was the big run by Gary Arrow we talked about. Um, here we see another run by Gary Arrow as he got it down to the doorstep, and then the Red Raiders punched it in. Um, there's the, the replay again. You see Gary Arrow getting tackled right on the doorstep by Arredondo, and um, then McBride punching it in for the touchdown. So, uh, and then we can see here the extra point, but, you know, back live here, up in the booth. Uh, so the Quincy Presidents come out with the victory. They're eighth in a row, Jim. And, um, well, you know, not much you can say about that. You know, they've certainly dominated the series recently, as I mentioned. Uh, it was 12 out of 13. Uh, so they come out here and have a good victory. And, again, a good way to end the season. Uh, but both teams showed improvement as the season went on. You know, in the beginning of the season, North Quincy looked very shaky. Uh, new coach, a lot of young guys. Uh, they certainly came out here strong to end the season. Oh, yeah, we saw substantial improvement in North Quincy. Uh, they did not. Uh, we got the trophy presentation on screen here. And uh, they see, you see the uh, well-coiffed and easily recognized duo of Principal Frank Santoro down there. He's down there with Coach Noble and the Yellow Rain Slicker and all the boys celebrating receipt of the trophy. Um, that's a shot by Grace Busher. I know we're going to talk about the people who helped out today, but um, Grace did a great job. She's got the shot there as the president celebrate receipt of the trophy. Uh, Coach Noble addressing the boys. And um, it's going to make the Thanksgiving turkey taste all the better down that end of the city. Well, Jim, as you mentioned, a lot of people went into helping this production make it what it is. We're going to run down some of those names right now. Uh, on grip, Peter Doherty. On camera, uh, Grace Busher. As we mentioned, a fantastic job by Grace all season long. On audio, Glenn Busher. On graphics, Michael Jarvey. Back up from NYU, Jim, just for Thanksgiving Day. Came up from school from NYU to be part of this production. On slow-mo replay, Bill Early. Our engineer, Chris Potter. Our director, George Capadonna. And our executive producer, Betty Campbell. So a uh, fantastic season of high school football here produced by Quincy Access Television. We want to thank all the members who volunteered their Friday evenings and here today on Thanksgiving morning to come out. Um, sometimes it was cold, it was rainy here today, uh, but they came out and produced a lot of great football, and we want to thank them for all their hard work. Yeah, we should also mention our sideline guy, our uh, rookie extraordinaire, Matt McLaughlin, was not with us today because he was down below doing a uh, webcast at WBZ Radio. So um, Matt has certainly listened to us well. I don't know if he used the word <laughs> comfortness today on WBZ Radio, but he did a great job, so he deserves a lot of credit for that. Otherwise, he would have joined us down the field. So you're right about all the people who get involved in our productions, John. We really appreciate it. All right, and also we want to mention, I'm being told by in the truck here, uh, that over 1,500 people watched the telecast online here today. Uh, people in China and Europe, and through a lot of the states as well, were watching it. Uh, 127 military personnel were watching the game on the web. Uh, so we certainly want to wish them a happy Thanksgiving. And uh, I think it was great to be able to see this great traditional rivalry. Um, you know, not a lot of people might have been from Quincy, but they could certainly tune in, watch some Thanksgiving football, and get a little piece of Americana. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving to all of them, although I'm sure Thanksgiving has ended in the yeah. Far East. But in any event, uh, we wish them all well. Congratulate Matt on that broadcast, and um, congratulate the Presidents on a great victory. All right, so for Jim Timmons, my name is Jonathan Clary. We want to thank you for watching this broadcast of high school football, the 74th annual edition of this tradition. North Quincy comes out, excuse me, Quincy comes out with a score of 10-7 to for their A-Street victory, 12 out of 13. 
So thank you for watching QA TV Sports.